Happy full moon, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to this full moon in Sagittarius. Pick a card reading. Thank you guys so much for being here. It is so wonderful to see you. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the full moon in Sagittarius. Of course, this is from sidereal astrology. Yeah, but that doesn't really matter. Um, if you've been guided to this video and there are, and you and just from the thumbnail itself, you already feel like one of these messages is going to connect with you, with you, then just take it. Yeah, don't worry about that. But in this video, we are going to be talking about the full moon in Sagittarius, and it is set up in a few different sections. The first thing that we're going to start with uh, is a discussion about the astrology of, of this full moon and how that how that uh, could be setting the stage energetically for certain things to be happening in your life. After that, there will be about a 30 second meditation where you can sit with the image of the five different options that are available to you in this reading and choose which one feels the best for you. Yeah, you don't just have to choose one. You could choose as many as you like, as many of them as that as vibrate or, or feel like they're resonating with you then go for it, okay? I will say that there are a few of these uh, messages that are that do feel directly connected to each other. So if you feel at any point that you want to do more than one or you want to take the advice in that certain reading and check out one of the others, you are more than welcome to do so, yeah? And then after this 30-second meditation, we'll follow all of the different readings. So if you would like to skip to any moment in the reading, there are timestamps. There is a time. There is a comment that is pinned, the very first comment that is pinned in the comment section below that contains all of the timestamps. So say if you want to skip the very first part and skip the discussion and move straight to the messages, you are more than welcome to do that. Just make sure you are following your heart, your intuition, and everything will flow quite well for you in this reading, yeah? With that said, we are going to get started on discussing the energies about this full moon. Now, the biggest thing that I noticed with this full moon in Sagittarius is that there is a good amount of mirroring that's happening, energetic mirroring that's happening that is really setting the stage for some action to be taken during this full moon and some communication, higher learning, and maybe even some travel, whether that be physical or just uh, in the realm of the mind. That is all possible here, okay? Now, of course, a full moon uh, in astrology is represented by an opposition between the sun and the moon, okay? And a full moon is always a great time to draw on the powers of the moon to manifest whatever it is you are looking to manifest in your life. Now, with an opposition between the sun and the moon, naturally, the sun and the moon are going to be in opposing signs, right? So we'll say with the last full moon that we had, which was back in May, uh, the full the moon was in Scorpio and the sun was in Taurus. These are direct opposites of each other in the zodiac. So that's normal. That's what an opposition is. An opposition is when two planets are about 180 degrees from each other, which is directly opposite of each other in the chart, okay, within the 360 degree chart. So that's no different. I mean, that's no mystery here in terms of this full moon, okay? So the full the moon is actually in Sagittarius and then the sun will be in Gemini. That's normal. But there's another element of mirroring that's happening here that I think is really awesome, is very unique to this full moon and is bringing a lot of potential forward. And that is the houses that the moon and the sun are in, which are also associated with the constellations that they are in. So first, um, Obviously, we know that the sun is going to be in Gemini, the moon is going to be in Sagittarius. These are direct opposites of each other. But also, in terms of the house placements at the time of the actual full moon, like when, when the moon is its fullest and then, and then moving forward, the moment that the moon is its fullest, the moon is going to be, yes, in Sagittarius, but it's going to be in the third house. The third house is ruled by Gemini. And the sun is going to be in Gemini, but the sun will be in the ninth house. And already the third and the ninth houses are directly connected to each other. You could see the ninth house as an expanded version 
of the third house. And the other really cool thing about this is not only are they in houses that are fairly connected and very fairly similar to, similar to each other, but they're but those planets, the sun and the moon are actually in the constellations that rule the the house that is directly opposite to it. So, for example, we have the moon in Sagittarius, which is in the third house. But the third house is ruled by Gemini, which is where the sun is. And the sun is in the ninth house in Gemini, yes. But the ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius, where the moon is. This is a really cool and unique uh, uh, event or placement for this full moon. And I definitely feel like it's directly connected to... Well, actually, to be honest with you, other than the, the cool mirroring effect that's happening between the, the planet, uh, the, the, the signs and the houses, um, I feel like this full moon is definitely a culmination of what seems to be have kicked off, have been kicked off for us during the full moon in, in Scorpio back in May. So let's backtrack a little bit. Back in May, we did have this full moon in Scorpio. And of course, it was a full moon. So the, the sun and the moon were in opposition with each other. So the moon was in Scorpio. The sun was in Taurus. And at the top right of your screen, you will be able to find a card that will take you to the readings and the videos that I did surrounding that, plus the new moon, plus Mercury in retrograde, which are all these things that... Um, all these uh, elements that I feel like have really been supporting us in where we find ourselves now in this full moon, okay? But again, let's go back. So the full moon in Scorpio back in May was a really great time, a perfect time for us to set the intention in terms of manifesting the uncovering and the revealing of aspects of our lives that we no longer resonate with or just things that were really hidden. Scorpio is the sign of um, death and rebirth and transformation and that which is hidden, uncovering that which is underneath the surface. Uh, Scorpio also rules the eighth house, which is the house of the occult, psychic awareness, psychic ability, uh, other people's money, um, and just like mystery and kind of dark and scary type things, right? With the sun, I'm sorry, with the moon having been in Scorpio at that time, this was a really great time for us to dig up what was any sort of plants or any sort of established things in our lives that no longer serve us, that don't resonate with us, or we just no longer want to vibe with or no longer want to work with. It was also a great time for us to dig deep to, the un to, the, to uncover certain things about our lives that need healing and need, tr need transmutation, right? And then with the opposition of the sun, with the sun in that full moon cycle, with the moon being in Scorpio and the sun being in Taurus, this was a great time for you to work on nurturing yourself and work on figuring out what it is that you want to plant, what seeds you want to plant into your garden and grow, or what it is you want to create in your life um, at that time, right? And then moving forward, we had Mercury going retrograde. Now, Mercury, as, as far as this full moon is, concern with it being in Sagittarius, the Mer Mercury, Mercury will have gone stationed direct and will be moving direct by this time, okay? So, um, which is another beneficial aspect to the elements of this full moon. But let's go back a little bit to when Mercury was in retrograde. Now, Mercury in retrograde is a great time to really reanalyze things, uh, rework your contracts, we re rework your agreements. Um, it's also, a, 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 when, when planets go in retrograde, it's a time of going internal or, 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 or taking the focus to your internal reality. And with Mercury in retrograde, coupled with that last full moon in Scorpio back in May, this was also, this was another, uh, in my opinion, it was another really beneficial energy in terms of seeking within and going within and re-understanding how it is you feel or what it is you think or what it is how it is you want to communicate about certain things and what your mental process has been and what it is you can reshape, rebuild, and regrow in your life moving forward, right? That's what this Mercury in retrograde has been supporting in terms of the, the that full moon. Then we hit the new moon, which was in Taurus. And again, with that last full moon in Scorpio, uncovering things, basically weeding your garden, we'll say. 
Then the new moon in Taurus, Taurus brought us a place or a, brought us a period in which a new beginning was possible. You could begin to start to plant those seeds or start to put some action or processes in place in terms of the things that you've come to understand about your reality and your life that you want to change and the way that you may be reshaping your reality. Finally, now we come to the, the full moon in Sagittarius and the full moon in Sagittarius here is really feeling like a time of action, action, action. I mean, of course, a full moon phase is a great time to take action because that's when the, 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 the power and the energy of the moon is at its fullest. So if you want to do anything like um, doing any sort of ritual or anything like that, this is the perfect time to do that, to get your manifestations underway. So also what i'm getting what i've been getting from this full moon energy is there's a lot of communication that could come of this because we do have the third house and the ninth house uh, emphasis here plus the ruling signs of G Gemini and Sagittarius both are mutable signs but both are very much about communication um, and with the pla and, and so with the placements of this you have the sun in the ninth house which is in Gemini the sun in the ninth house is bringing forward expansion and deeper understanding in terms of what has come up for you or what has changed for you or what is needing to change or what you are wanting to change in your life over this full moon phase from the last full moon to this full moon it's been an energy of trying to figure it out trying to get under the surface trying to see clearly and then now we're getting to the point where with the sun being in the ninth house, there is potential to have a much deeper understanding about what all of your, this means in your life or what else has, whatever, whatever has been coming up in your life. At this point, you now have the, the opportunity to reach that deeper understanding, to reach that, that moment where you really understand what things mean for you on a deep soul-based level. And then with the sun being in Gemini, right, in the ninth house, representing that deeper understanding, Gemini is giving you the influence to want to communicate, to want to branch out, to want to reach out, to want to teach, or to want to learn, or to want to go on some sort of pilgrimage or a trip or travel, even if it's not physical travel. It could be just travel in the mind, right? Uh, and I really feel like there's an energy of connecting with people that's coming through there from a, the deep aspects of your soul. You could want to connect with people and you could want to learn and or teach. Remember, the ninth house is a about deep philosophy it's also about higher learning okay so with both Gemini and Sagittarius third and the ninth house energies here there could be a level of wanting to share your story or wanting to teach now with the moon being in the third house in Sagittarius when it comes to the smaller focus of the community that you want to communicate with or the people that you want to communicate with or the travel, whether that be physical or just mental, that you want to go on, that you want to embark on in your life. The moon in Sagittarius is bringing a much more expanded point of view for you when it comes to how you want to teach, how you want to learn, how you want to communicate with other people, okay? This is a really awesome balancing and mirroring energy that's bringing up bringing something it's like it's bringing whatever needs to come up for you from the depths of your soul and then creating a sort of smaller framework practical application to following through with this okay now the other major thing that I that I picked up on while I was working looking through the astrology of all of this is the fact that I was feeling like intuitively I was just feeling like business could be really big for you here or big for some of you here and that makes perfect sense because the third house both the third house and the ninth house can kind of represent business but it represents business in the way of how you are communicating with people or how you are working with other people okay there's a teamwork aspect with to this situation um, the third house can represent business but just in the mundane form in the day-to-day -day or small community or immediate area form the ninth house expands on that for you so this could be international business the ninth house is also energies of communicating or learning different languages so they're expanding your horizons when it comes to business is definitely possible here the element of being able to expand those horizons or uh, for some of you there could be an energy of wanting to reach out maybe wanting to get some business partners uh, or maybe some sponsorships involved Involved, that is a really great energy or this is a really great time or a really great energy for you to to set that intention and get that manifestation going 
The last thing that I want to say before we move on to the actual readings is that um, with the deep philosophical element that comes through with this full moon, with the sun being in the ninth house, also being in Gemini, in terms of interpersonal relationships, and actually this is something that came through in a number of the readings that we have to follow this section here, but there is an element of communicating with loved ones, with partners, with friends or associates from a deeper aspect or a deeper awareness within yourself. I feel like ever since this full moon in Scorpio, we've had a lot of opportunity, a lot of chances to really understand what certain things mean for us on a deeper level. And now that we're reaching this full moon, it feels like we're, for some of us, we are being pushed to communicate with our loved ones or with the people closest to us or the, with the people around us from a much deeper and self-aware point of view okay and that actually is something that came through in a number in a, at least two of the readings for this session all right so just keep that in mind you know if you're feeling like there's anything new that you have learned about yourself that you want to communicate to your partner uh, to your loved ones to the people around you or if there's something that has been bothering you or hindering you some sort of hold up or some sort of blockage that you haven't been able to figure out until now now is the time for you to communicate about that because I feel like over this time period, you will have had the opportunity to get a deeper understanding about it uh, uh, in terms of what it means for you. Uh, and then now you'll have the opportunity to communicate with other people, bounce those ideas off those people around you, or speak your truth to certain people that you are strongest, strongly connected to. Now, the last thing that I want to say about that is... Um, I do feel like there could be a lot of, of change that could happen in your home and family life when it comes to your interpersonal relationships because at this point, by the time, I believe by the time the, the full moon happens... Uh, Venus will have moved into Cancer, okay? So Venus was in Gemini at first, uh, which was a great time to communicate and, and have a meeting of the minds between you and friends or family or loved ones. But now with Venus having moved into Cancer at this point, uh, the fam the focus on family, but the also the focus on foundation and really making a safe space for everyone to be involved is very much possible here. So things could really improve for you from, especially if it, when it comes to interpersonal relationships, especially if you've been really taking this time to do the work to understand yourself on a deeper level and what certain elements of your life and maybe even your relationships mean for you, how they've been affecting you, how they have been, how, how they've been affecting your vibe and all that. Yeah. All right. So that's about it for the uh, channeled messages and, and minor discussion about it. Next, we are going to get into the actual readings, yes? So, what you see on your screen right now is an image of the five different options that you have. There's card one, card two, card three, and card four, <laughs> and finally, card five. Take a moment to sit with yourself and meditate on this image. Allow your intuition and your higher guidance, your guides, your angels, God source creator, your ancestors, those who you resonate with and those who are on your spiritual team and your heart. Allow these factors to help you decide and choose which reading resonates with you the most. Go with your feeling here, not necessarily with your eyes. Focus on the feeling that you get from each option and choose the one that feels the best to you. Of course, you can choose more than one. Go with your gut here. Yeah? So take this moment to choose which option you feel strongly guided to go with and then you can find the corresponding corresponding timestamp down in the pinned comment in the comment section below and i will see you there
Hello there! If you have chosen card number one, then this is the message for you in terms of what are you manifesting during this full moon in Sagittarius. I'm going to start with the Moonology deck. I'm going to give this three shuffles for you, card one. This is one. Messages for card number one. This is two. Last shuffle here. This is three. So what are you manifesting here, card one, during this full moon in Sagittarius? Okay, wow. As you can see, a number of cards just fell out here. We have two that came out originally, or initially, and then all these four here fell out, and I was told to take all of them. So we're, we're gonna start right here. Overall energy for you, card one, is the end of a tough cycle approaches. So this is really good. Now, oops, I hit the, the thing here. So this is really good. Uh, this has been an energy that's been coming through for the collective for quite a while now, okay? It definitely does feel like Endings are in sight for you because then one of the other cards that came out for you here is conclusions are within reach. So I really want to I really want to say I really, I really want to encourage you card one to rest assured that whatever it is you've been facing that's been of a very difficult nature nature for you lately is in fact coming to an end. And I did just hear that you're ensuring this because you have been doing the work to bring the end of these these toxic situations or these tough cycles or or whatever you've been doing the work to bring them to an end i'm feeling very specifically for you card one that you this is in the forefront of your conscious mind so your spirit or your spirit and your higher self and your guides and and spirit is coming through and saying to you rest assured that these endings are coming into play because you are consciously you have consciously brought them into focus and now the time has come for it to be released from your life okay now there's another card that has come out here face up we're going to talk about that next that is your dreams need a practical plan and this did come out in reverse i'm going to leave it leave it that way because it came out that way it feels like it's a very specific that it came out this way um because you're reaching the end of this tough cycle here you you're reaching the point where you're getting to the where you're going to need to step through the threshold step over the threshold or step into this next phase of your life. And I definitely feel like even if you don't know exactly how things are going to turn out or exactly where you're going to go, I feel like you have a very strong idea of your trajectory moving forward from here. So now your dreams needing a practical plan is in reverse, but it's not a bad thing because now this is the time where spirit is asking for you to hunker down and really start planning out your next phases, the next steps that you're going to take in this phase. Even if you don't know exactly how things are going to happen, when you're going to get there, how you're going to get there, I do feel like you have a strong idea of where you're going, okay? So as much as you can at this point, really work on planning things out. Yeah, really work on planning things out. Any ideas that come to mind, um, any inspiration uh, that, that, that hits you at any given moment, just write it down. Even if it doesn't make sense in that moment, just write it down. You can come back to it later, okay? Let's get into these other two, four cards here. We're going to start with these two. Okay, I'm going to take this one upright. Okay, excuse me. No, sorry guys. Hold on, I'm talking to my cats. No, you can't go through that way. You have to go use the other door. No, 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 no. Go use the other door. Go. <laughs> sorry guys. Okay, so the next two cards that you have here are the energy is gaining momentum. And you have that with balance spirituality and practicality. Okay, so this is definitely, definitely connected to the first half of your situation, the first part of your reading here, in which you're needing to start making a plan. And as you're making this plan, for, for, for some of you specifically, or for you who has chosen card one here specifically, you have to allow yourself to understand that there are spiritual values and then there are also material values. And you cannot 
lose sight of the material aspect of the reality that we're in right now. We'll call that spiritual bypassing. When you're in a situation that has that has certain lower vibrational elements to it or just physical reality elements to it, which technically would be lower in vibration than uh, the higher spiritual awareness, fifth dimensional awareness or whatever you wanna call it. And, and just because it's a lower vibration doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. You have to remember here, uh, card one that you are still in a physical reality you are still in a physical world so there are some elements of this situation that that are physical in nature that still have to be taken into account do not allow yourself to spiritually by bypass here if there is a certain process that has been shown to work to get you to wherever it is you're trying to go or to help you reach the fruition of your dreams and your goals take that into consideration but then also round things out with the spiritual understanding that you have come to up until this point okay next two cards here for you we have Good. First one is your commitment is being tested. This is giving me very much Saturnian energies. Uh, at this time of this full moon uh, in Sagittarius, we do still have Saturn retrograde through Capricorn, okay? So what this is saying to me here, you guys, is that Saturn, the, the principles of Saturn are really coming through for you here. Your commitment is absolutely being tested. Your commitment to yourself, your commitment to the change that you're making, your commitment to whatever business adventures or or whatever uh, creative adventures or family goals that you have whatever it is that you have decided that you want to manifest for your life moving forward and especially now because this is a full moon so this is the best time for you to to really get the gears going in terms of manifestation your commitment is being tested you cannot allow yourself to slip back into the old if you're going to move forward and create the new okay that's definitely a saturnian energy coming through for you during this time Time. Last thing to say here, um, connected to your commitment is being tested. Nothing is set in stone. Now this, I'm going to be straight up and honest with you guys. I don't want to scare you, but this is a, this is a little bit of a warning. Okay. And it's not a bad thing, but it's definitely connected to the fact that your commitment is being tested here. So you're, you're being put on notice, not to say that you are bad or you are wrong, or like you've gotten a slap on the wrist or you've got one, two strikes upon you or whatnot, whatnot, whatever. We are just trying to remind you that you have to stay committed. If you are going to be rewarded for your efforts through Saturn's energy, Energy, then you have to stay committed. You have to stay in the driver's seat. You have to stay in the zone. You have to stay focused. Do not let anything, anything take you off your path. Okay. But now because of this, nothing is yet set in stone. Anything can happen. And that's true. Anything can happen at any given moment, card one. Like I get that. But at the same time, um, you want to make sure that you set yourself up for the best possible things to happen. And if that is going to be your reality, then you need to stay active. You need to stay committed. You need to stay focused on what it is you are working on, what it is you are trying to achieve. All right. Excellent. We're going to move forward here. I want to get some uh, key words for you uh, for this full moon in Sagittarius. We're going to get that from the Sacred Destiny deck. Yeah. Three shovels. One. Let's try that again. One. Two. Three. Oh, or just three. <laughs> three. All right. So some key guidance, some key words here from the Sacred Destiny deck for you, card one. At the bottom of the deck, you do have potential. This is beautiful. And that really just is, a, that honestly feels like a pretty general statement here, but that's okay. We're going to take it anyway, because I mean, this is a full moon, you guys. So yeah, of course, there's all kinds of potential flowing in the air. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Moving forward here, you have illumination and then you also have community. 
Now, I feel like for you specifically card one, if you've chosen card one, there are some sort of communal aspects that you have in your trajectory. <clears throat> With community here, I do, I, I am getting a good, a pretty strong Aquarian energy with this. Um, so maybe you're on, you're an Aquarius, you have a Aquarius in, uh, you have your sun, moon, or rising in Aquarius. Um, if you're savvy enough, you might want to, sorry guys, I need to, I need to drink some water. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. So, um, I feel like. Uh, you might also, if you're savvy enough, you might want to check your chart and see how this full moon, what may be transiting um, Aquarius for you, uh, where Aquarius, which house Aquarius is in, what planets are there. This is all from the, the perspective of your natal or birth chart. And then look at what is transiting this stuff, maybe even the ruler of Aquarius. I just, I'm getting a very Aquarian energy for you here. Your focus needs to be on the community or your focus is already on the community. Um, and I feel like this may even be like a social worker type of energy for lack of a better term or a lack of a better phrase. But I just I get this feeling that there's something about the com community that you are looking to illuminate, that you're looking to bring forward. There's some sort of help that you can provide to the community. Maybe this full moon in Sagittarius, especially with all the other things that are happening here, you know, between the, the third and the ninth house connection that's happening in this situation. Um, and, and with like th the, the theme of this full moon in my interpretation being uh, coming forward and communicating, teaching, br uh, 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 sharing your story, sharing your phil philosophical understandings about life and what it is you've been through and how you've come through it and how you understand it um, and how you've grown from it. I feel like there is an ability for you to bring your own uh, specific uh, form of personal illumination and then share that with the community so that you can help illuminate them. You can help them find a sense of illumination within themselves. That is a really, really beautiful energy for you, pile, uh, card one. Okay, we're going to get into some tarot messages here for you. And I, for you, pile one, I'm going to be using the mystical manga deck. Yes, here we go. Three shuffles, one. Messages for card one here in terms of what are you manifesting for this full moon in Sagittarius? This is two. And this is three. Oop, try that again. Three. All righty. Alrighty, card one, let's see what we've got for you here. Messages for card one, please, in terms of what are you manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius? Okay. Okay. Overall energy here, <clears throat> you do have the Ten of Pentacles. And first and foremost, card one, this to me is speaking to a completion of a cycle. I am getting family here for you. And the family aspect could definitely be what is coming through for you in terms of the community. Uh, in terms of the community, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, a massive collective of people. It could just be your your immediate family, your immediate community, or the people that are... are um, closest to you okay the ten of pentacles also represent uh, represents entrepreneurship this is a representation of the tenth house so this could be your career and your finances check what may be transiting your tenth house i do know for a fact that during this full moon uh the sun is in the tenth house okay so Oh, at least at the time of the full moon. So your career could be very much in focus for you. Um, your finances, your personal finances, how that affects your family and making changes for your family um, in terms of that, uh, in, uh, changes for the better, okay? But also the first thing that I felt with this card one was um, a sense of completion, completion of a lesson. And with the 10 of pentacles here, this could very well be the reason why you are now standing in a position to share your story or share your light, okay? Okay. Yes, look, underneath the Ten of Pentacles is the Queen of Cups. So there is a definitely an emotional understanding, a sense of empathy. For some of you, you actually may be getting into a sense of energy work or being a, a card reader, um, starting a YouTube channel, starting some sort of blog, um, creating some sort of presence in social media or just in the community, community, getting into, like really getting your gears going in terms of using your intuition to help the collective, okay? 
All right, cool. Um, let's move forward here. Uh, I'll put that there for now. Uh, the next cards we have here, we have a number of cards. One is face down, the rest are face up. Um, okay, so you have the lovers, Gemini energy. Now, the full moon, no, I'm sorry, the moon is going to be in Sagittarius, but the sun is in Gemini here, okay? So take that in, into account. You have the page of wands, and then you also have the eight of cups. So there is definitely an energy here of you guys making a choice um, in terms of what is best for you, the lovers, and re-identifying yourself, moving on in some way, re-identifying yourself, the page of wands, and moving on in some way. Some of you definitely have, I'm definitely feeling like you have some sort of brand new creative project that you would like to get off the ground. And now is definitely the time to do so. Make sure that you stay committed to this. Do not let anything stand in your way in terms of this. Last card here. It, uh, it did fall face down and it is in reverse. You do have the Empress in reverse here. That's interesting. Why do we have the Empress in reverse? I'm gonna get into some clarity for that. For that, I'm gonna use the Los Garabeo deck. So why do we have the Empress in reverse here? To be honest, Pile One, I do feel like the Empress in reverse is representing a mother or a mother figure of some sort. Uh, for some of you, you may actually be graduating, or we'll say, for lack of a better term, graduating from the council of someone that was like the empress or the the uh, a strong motherly or matriarchal figure in your life or in your family um that was the strongest thing that i was getting here the empress is in reverse in terms of no longer needing this attribute or mm, is that the right word for it no longer needing i i, I want to say no longer needing the safety net of um a mother's love or not to say that you're going to lose the love of your mother for forever but this it just kind of feels like this is that moment where the bird is pushed out of the nest and needs to start flying on their own that's what i'm getting from the empress here but we're going to clarify this a little bit more yeah two more shuffles for you and uh, last one okay so uh, please clarify, please clarify the Empress here for card number one. For those of you that have chosen card number one, what is the Empress in reverse? Yep, that's exactly what I thought it was. Okay. Anything else? No, I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay. At Ooh, look. <laughs> look, card one. Look, 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 look. You've got a double ten here. The Ten of Pentacles is at the bottom of both of these decks. So yes, you have completed an, in, an initiation, we'll call it. You have completed a cycle. It is time for you, it is time for the bird to be pushed out of the nest and to fly. First card out, to clarify the Empress in reverse, is the Fool. The Fool is coupled with the Six of Pentacles. So it feels very specifically, card one, that the reason why you are being pushed out of the nest like this, or at least it's time for you to get going and to get moving, is so that you can give back to the community in some way. There is some sort of Empress energy, okay, that you have been connected to over this time period that has allowed you to see more clearly, that has allowed you to grow, that has allowed you to learn some pretty serious but awesome lessons here ten of pentacles okay you have the ability you have the strength it is now time to get going i want to clarify the eight of cups a little bit here uh clarify the eight of cups for card number one please aha oh gosh you guys this is beautiful anything else nope we're gonna leave it there okay yes Beautiful. Okay, so the Eight of Cups here is not talking about anything, anything dramatic, anything too serious. Um, it's really just when we're let, let's take it back to this analogy of the bird being pushed out of the nest, the bird needing to fly and get on with its own life. The nest is represented by these eight cups on the card here. Again, not that this is anything bad. These eight cups or whatever this represents for you served a deep and and strong higher purpose. But now it's like it's almost as if there's no chance for you to grow here or this is not ultimately where you're meant to stay you're now moving on towards something that's going to provide you with a deep sense of 
clarity and fulfillment, okay? It's literally a moment where you are now ready to get on with your life. The chariot, okay? At the bottom of the deck, you have the hanged man. You have learned what it is you needed to learn, and now it's time for you to put that into practice, put that into action, to start sharing your word, to start sharing your truth, to start growing your empire, your Ten of Pentacles, okay? The Ten of Pentacles also represents longevity. It represents the empire. It represents uh, solidity, foundation, established energies, that which you work long and hard for okay this is your legacy that's also the word i'm looking for and so now the eight of cups is representing the change in perspective that you've needed to now get you to start moving forward and to build your legacy i love this Woo! okay anything else we want to clarify let's clarify the lovers what's the lovers please for card one what's the lovers please Oh, perfect. Oh, beautiful. Okay, there is, this is, okay, so, so, um, this is definitely a union type energy. In clarifying this, I just heard union is at hand. You have, what, what this lover's energy is representing is definitely a choice that you are making to move forward with something that is best for you, to, that serves your higher awareness and serves your soul in a better way. You have the hermit with the world clarifying the lovers okay so yes again another completion type energy you had the ten of the ten of pentacles excuse me the ten of pentacles twice and now you have the world the cycle is officially completed it's time to get on with your next journey the fool okay keeping in mind guys the world is the last card of the major arcana once everything is cleared up and you're ready to move on you circle back to the fool to start a brand new adventure and that's exactly where you are right now you have been going through the internal process. You've been going through the process of learning about yourself, finding your inner divine light and finding your inner truth and what it is you want to bring to the world. Keep in mind, guys, this full moon is in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is an energy of, in my, in my personal opinion, the light worker, the torch bearer, the one that wakes up and then goes out into the world and communicates the philosophies and the theories in, in, a, in an effort sometimes to, to help others wake up. This does not happen in a forceful way. All you can really do, card one, is just, just go out there and share your truth and allow it to illuminate whomever is ready for it, okay? But you've got the illumination here. You are, you are connected with your inner self, your higher self, and the, the cycle of getting into that, the cycle of bringing yourself into this state of union is complete and now you're ready to share your message with the world overall energy clarifying the lovers at the bottom of the deck is the community itself the three of cups the collective your soul family the people that you are meant to vibe with the people that you are meant to enlighten to teach and to continue to learn from okay we all learn from each other here this is so beautiful all right pile one Okay, so what I want to do now, Pile 1, is I want to get you a closing message. And we're going to get you some closing oracle guidance from the Everyday Witch Oracle, yeah? All right, closing oracle message for card number one, three shuffles, one. Two. And three. All right, closing oracle message for card number one, please, spirit. Oops, I just hit the, we're good. Okay, <laughs> closing message, please, spirit. There it is right there. Excellent, 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 excellent. We have give in to passion. And this is all about creative, artistic ability, okay? Sharing your song, sharing your light, writing your music, writing your literature, writing your book, uh, uh, writing your blog, sharing your feelings, sharing your thoughts, sharing your enlightenment, adding to the symphony of the universe. Yes, beautiful card one. Let's read that for you. Which one is this? This is give in to passion. Bear with me with for a second, you guys. There it is. 
Ah, yeah, this is a fire card, creativity and passion. Give in to passion. Okay. Here we go. The divination of this card says, this card is probably telling you that you are working too hard and playing too little. Are you putting aside enough time to do the things you are passionate about? Have you been allowed, uh, have you even allowed yourself to consider what those things might be? If the answer to either or both of these questions is no, you may want to consider giving in to passion. Remember that we all draw energy from the well of our spirit. If you don't occasionally do something to replenish that well, sooner or later you will come up empty. It may seem frivolous to spend time doing things you love because you love them, but life can't be only about doing what is necessary and practical. Leave space for the passions of the heart. Make time for the people and activities that bring you joy and all other aspects of your life will benefit. I want to read the action card, the action portion of this card too. Do something today that gives you that burst of energy and satisfaction. It doesn't matter what it is as long as you are doing something that sparks that fire in your spirit. If you love to cook or bake, do that and then share it with your friends and family. If you are a creative person, work on your art, writing, or whatever it is you get the most pleasure out of creating. Does helping other people bring you that freedom or that feeling or freedom, sure. How, di how about digging in the dirt in your garden or flower bed? Do that, even if only for an hour, half an hour, if that's all you have to spend, or you know, there's always sex. Hey, <laughs> I know that's right. Oh, sorry. Okay. That counts as passion too, as long as you're doing it with the right person for the right reasons. Light a fire in your body, mind, and soul, and revel in the gifts of the element of fire. Which is exactly where this full moon is. In Sagittarius. Fire. All right. So there you have it, card one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please Make sure that you get engaged. Let me know how this resonated for you in the comments section down below. If you want to come back later on or if you're watching this later on and you have a perspective as to what happened, what transpired for you in the during this full moon in Sagittarius, please let me know. I love to hear from you guys and I love to hear the confirmation of how this actually resonates for you. With that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic full moon and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Bye. Hello there. If you have chosen card number two, then this message is for you. Yeah, we're going to start with the Moonology deck to get you some overall themes here for what it is you are manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius. I'm going to give this three shuffles. One. For card number two, messages for card number two, please spirit, in terms of what they or we, they are manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius. This is two, oh, let's try that again. Shuffle two for card number two. <laughs> and this is three. All right, card number two. So what are you manifesting in terms of this full moon in Sagittarius. What are you manifesting, card number two? Messages for card number two, please. You have one card here so far. Ah, okay. Okay, 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 so here we go. Full moon in Scorpio. It is time to release negativity. Now, I want to connect this all the way back to the last full moon we had last month in May uh, that was in actually in Scorpio. And um, I, uh, so the deal with that is um, that full moon really helped to kick us off in this direction of getting down to some deeper truths about ourselves and our reality and how we would like to change things. Um, so it's been a process since the last full moon towards now, where we had that full moon in Scorpio, then we had the new moon, which I, off the top of my head, I forget where the new moon was right after that moon in Scorpio. But now, uh, uh, and the new moon was the time to really start to put 
the new reality into action, the new process, the new beginning into place for yourself. And now that we get to this full moon here, this is all about further action, okay? So uh, I feel like for those of you that chose, that have chosen card number two, you guys have really been working actively on releasing a lot of things from the past. And this absolutely could have to do with the twin flame journey, okay? Sorry guys, mosquitoes. I totally just did that on camera, but you know what? You know what, it's fine. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you've been working on um, releasing a lot of negativity when it comes to interpersonal relationships and other people. A big thing that I'm getting for you here is that you really need to be working on forgiveness. For Remember, forgiveness is not for the other person. It is absolutely 100% has to do with yourself. I feel like you've been struggling with this. Now, I'm not trying to diminish whatever it is that has happened for you that you're working on releasing during this full moon cycle. I am, and it's definitely been a difficult situation. I feel like you've been very deeply hurt and that's no lie and there's no shade, there's no tea, there's no, absolutely no shame in that. But unfortunately, what I'm also picking up on is the fact that this has been a hindrance to you. Um, for some of you, there's some level of, of closure that you've been requiring, not understanding that Unfortunately, we're not always going to get closure at all, if any, um, and def and most likely not in the way that you you feel like you should, or at least your ego is saying that you should receive it in order for you to be healed. You can't worry about that, okay? And so that's why forgiveness is a really big thing for you because you have to work on not only forgiving the other people or the situation for whatever it was, but then also forgiving yourself for potentially maybe even getting being in this situation to begin with and that might be a really big thing for you in terms of this um but keep in mind guys that no matter what it is that we go through in life we're always going to have challenging situations but they are always meant to serve our highest good okay at the bottom of the deck right now uh, a, li a little bit of um guidance here you do have the answers that you need are coming but you need to focus your your awareness on forgiveness because it is the lack of forgiveness or the inability to forgive or just the the staunch energies uh staunch resistance to any sort of forgiveness that is effectively blocking the answers that you need and i feel like here for you card two the answers that you need are in relation to what all of this means for you or what all of these situations have meant for you and the lesson that you are meant to be learning in the situations yeah let's get a little bit more any more messages for card number two in terms of what they are manifesting in this full moon in sagittarius Absolutely, 100%, 100%, you do have the balsamic moon, a time for healing. So for you guys, this full moon in Sagittarius is all about healing, is all about releasing ne negativity and releasing whatever has been holding you back in, in your life, in terms of your manifestations. If this is a twin flame situation for you, what I, what I really wanna tell you is um, you have to let go. Okay, there is a resistance here to letting go, uh, and 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 I understand that I was there at one point too, but I had to get to the point of view where it's like me only uh, the understanding, the realization that me holding on to whatever it was I was holding on to at the time was doing nothing but restricting me, restricting my energy, and effectively holding me back. If you do resonate with the twin flame journey, you have to understand that the biggest aspect of this journey is about reaching a sense of wholeness and completion within yourself yes there is the possibility or the potential that you and your divine counterpart could be working together towards some common goal in your life whatever that may be but you do not need them to be in agreement with you you do not need them to be in alignment with you for you to do whatever it is you need to do or you want to do in your life okay that is 100 something that really tends to hold us back in the beginning but anyway this full moon for you is really all about healing, okay? And releasing the negativity so that you can finally get on with your life and really start manifesting the things that you want. Now, last thing I wanna say here at the bottom of the deck, you do have nothing is yet set in stone. That did come out for card number one. If you wanna watch card number one, you can do that. Um, but I mean, it's a minor similarity, so take it as it resonates. You could watch it if you wanted to, just for like shits and giggles, but like, <laughs> but like whatever. 
So um, nothing is yet set in stone, okay? Um, the biggest thing that's coming through for that is things may not actually turn out as bad as you might think. And because you might be swimming in this sea of negativity and fear and doubt and pain, um, your, your outlook on life moving forward, I think, is much bleaker than it actually seems. Or even if it, even what you're perceiving or what you're thinking is your reality, you still need to understand that miracles are possible, okay? Anything can happen. Shift your focus, shift your energetic vibration to align with good, with to align with the best potential outcome for you, for your life, for the circumstance or situation that you are dealing with, okay? Let's move forward, card two. I want to move to the Sacred Destiny deck, and I want to get some key words uh, for you to focus on in this full moon in Sagittarius, yeah? Three shuffles. One. Two. And three. Alrighty, kids. So... Messages for card number two in terms of what we are manifesting, what you are manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius, yeah? Keywords, things to focus on, things to look out for. Okay, excellent. Overall energy, you do have potential here. This is another card that came out for pile number one. But again, at the same time, we have a full moon here. So obviously, there's all kinds of potential for you. Yes, this is definitely a great time to make get your manifestations into play. Or in case of in, in your case, card number two, in terms of <laughs> getting your shit together or just like pulling it together, pulling it all up so that you can have the advantage in terms of what it is you're trying to manifest or create in your life in the future. I just feel like if you've chosen card number two, the big theme for you during this full moon, which makes, wow, which makes so much sense, but the, the big theme for you in terms of this full moon is clearing out the negativity so that you can get on with your life. And to be quite honest, Card number two, this is a perfect full moon for that. Why? Because the full moon is in Sagittarius and Sagittarius is a deep, deep energy of self-discovery, self-understanding, philosophy, philosophical understanding, and then teaching or using that philosophical understanding or deeper understanding to then spread, share your light. To, okay, all right, pile two. You really actually might want to watch pile one because I'm feeling like these are, these are similar energies here, okay? All right, so this is all about letting go of the negativity and using the potential of this full moon to clear your path so that you can get moving and get going on what it is you, you started here for, what it is you incarnated here for, yeah? You have three cards. Excellent. You have Embrace It, Healing Chaos, and Fulfillment. Now, this is, to be honest with you, card two, this is so straightforward in my mind. You have embracing, embracing the past, figuring out what it is that it meant for you at that time, going through that process, and bringing forward the understanding so that you can deal with the healing. Now, I am going to say, I, I'm picking up for some of you the next three months after this the actual full moon is probably going to be a chaotic time for you just because you're going to be going through the storm, weathering the storm of the healing chaos, okay? So this is not a bad thing. This is actually an excellent, excellent, excellent thing, but you have to get through it. You have to push through it. Okay, ain't no other way to do it. Ain't no, ain't nothing to it but to do it. Ain't no other way to it but to just do it. Okay, just get yourself through this healing, this healing chaos. Eventually, it is going to bring fulfillment for you. Eleven, eleven on the counter. It is going to bring fulfillment for you. But in order to reach that fulfillment, you're going to have to embrace whatever it is that's happened for you here and go and and get yourself through the the process of the healing from it. The only way to get this fruit. To grow, to to pick this to fruit and eat it, is to get the seed, plant the seed, and go through the process of it growing from a seed to a mature plant to then ultimately the development of the ripened fruit. That takes time. Okay, pile card two, but you got this, baby boo. I know you got this. I feel it. I you it, like the energy just feels so strong and so supportive for you. You got this. Remember that. Okay. Let's get into some tarot for you. 
For you, card two, I'm going to be using the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. Yeah? Let's get into this here. Three, sh okay. All right, five shuffles for you. One. Messages for card number two. This is two. What are you manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius? This is three. This is four. And this is five. All right. So, card number two. What tarot? What messages do we have for you in terms of what you are manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius from the tarot? Yes. Messages for card number two, please. All right. Overall energy is strength. Okay. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. All right, you're really going to need to hold your ego at bay here. And I feel like it is your ego and your conscious mind that has been holding on to the resentment that has been keeping you stuck. And this does feel like it's out of fear. This is a fear response and that makes perfect sense card two okay because you've been through some shit like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sugarcoat it i'm not gonna boil i'm not gonna no you've been through some shit and you need to honor that you need to honor your your intuition you need to honor your spirit you need to honor your guides and everything because everything that you went through yes it was difficult it was challenging but at the same time it was the right thing for you to go through in that moment. And, and, and currently, what's keeping you from healing, what's keeping you from releasing your neg the negativity is your ego's getting in the way. Technically, yes, because it's trying to protect you from anything like this in the future, but you don't have to do it that way. You can take the messages and the lessons that you learned in this situation and apply it to your life moving forward and still move forward with an open heart, okay? Let's see what else you have here. Oh, boy. Okay, but this is good, though. But this is exactly what I was just talking about. You have the Four of Pentacles. You have the World. You have the Ten of Cups. And you have the Knight of Pentacles. This is a beautiful energy, card two. I'm not going to lie. It's a totally beautiful energy. Now, in terms of the, the resentment, the fear, the anger, the pain, yes, you have been in an energy of holding on to that for dear life, Four of Pentacles. Uh, when this card comes out, a lot of the time I like to say, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. But, but yes, 100% card two. I absolutely agree with you there. But what I need you to understand is this is also a trauma response. This is also a defense mechanism. This is not necessarily the healthiest way to live your life, okay? But I do see that coming to an end. Look, there you go. You have the world. This is a completion of a tough cycle or a big a big life lesson, we'll call it, okay? You are moving towards the Ten of Cups, which is beautiful. A greater sense of fulfillment and happiness. I do feel for you, card two, at this point, with what is wrapping up in your life, you do have a better understanding of what is going to actually either lead you to and or be this representation of Ten of Cups. This could be family or this just could be uh, ultimate emotional fulfillment. Now, you do have to keep moving. You're going to have to take this step by step. You can't stop and you definitely cannot look back. You're going to have to be consistent, okay? And it's going to take time. This is not something that's going to develop overnight. 555 five, five on the counter. This is not something that's going to develop overnight, uh, card two. You're really just going to have to persevere and push through it. Push through this healing chaos. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, baby boo. All right? You're just going to have to take it easy. Take it easy on yourself. 100%. Definitely take it easy on yourself. Take it step by step. The other thing about the Knight of Pentacles is that even though he's a, the slowest moving knight in the deck, sure, we all understand that. But at the same time, he's methodical and he is consistent, honey. And he, and he is not trying to move on to the next step until he's got the current thing that he's working on sufficiently handled, all right? And that's how I feel. That's actually, if you just take it one moment at a time or one instance of whatever is coming up for you at a time in terms of this healing chaos, you are going to be much more successful. Your chances of success are going to be much higher if you just allow it you allow, allow yourself to take it one step at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't rush. Don't try to handle six things at once. 
I mean, if you can multitask, if it is within your wheelhouse or if it is within the realm of um of balance to 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 multitask for yourself all right then do that but just take it one step at a time for the most part okay i do want to get some clarity for you here we're going to use the los carabello deck uh, already what wants to like jump out at you is the hierophant Okay, and the Hierophant is representing tough lessons, but they are tough lessons that you need to go through. It's necessary for you to go through these lessons, and that is for the fulfillment of the evolution of your soul. Okay, you can't get around it. You cannot avoid these things. So you're just going to have to push through, right? All right. Um, I want to start with clarifying the Four of Pentacles, but I'm going to give this three shuffles for you. One. Two. And three. All right. So let's start by clarifying the four of pentacles for you, card two. What is the four of pentacles for card two? Woo! Okay. Yeah. All of these are upright, but I'm going to take them. And I'm just going to stop here. Overall energy is the ace of pentacles. So, um... First of all, what I want to say about this, it feels like some of you may be, it, may be losing a great deal or at least you feel like you're losing a great deal um, or, or in other words, you may have to sacrifice what it is you've been holding on to for you to receive this ace. For you to basically start over, okay? I'm not seeing this Ace of Pentacles being added to the Four of Pentacles to create the Five of Pentacles for you. No. What I'm seeing is completely letting go of those Four of Pentacles or whatever is represented by what did you by the Four of Pentacles in which or in terms of what it is you've been holding on to, completely releasing all of that. Of course, retaining the lessons that you've learned here, but completely releasing all of that in order for you to gain this next opportunity or this new phase, this new start, Ace of Pentacles. You have that with, uh, I'm going to put this here for a second. You have that with Judgment, the King of Cups, and the Four of Swords. Now, the King of Cups is representing more of that Scorpio energy. Some of you specifically, this is resonating for you on a love re a love level, an interpersonal relationship level, uh, maybe even Twin Flame. Yeah, we were talking about that. And they are a Scorpio or you are a Scorpio. Or it's also representing the Scorpionic energy of the last full moon, right? Full moon in Scorpio is down there. It's time to release negativity. Now, in terms of whatever it is you are releasing here, uh, uh, card two, you are being called to a state of a higher awareness. There is a wake up call, a, a an alarm clock that's going on for you, going off for you, excuse me, right now, judgment that is asking you to do what you know is right. The King of Cups, even though you know it's not the easiest thing for you to do, it's still the right thing for you to do. The other thing about the King of Cups is the 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 ability for him to stay grounded and centered and weather whatever storm is happening however ch however choppy or rocky the seeds seas around him are it doesn't phase him it doesn't stop him he's solid he's good okay that is definitely going to help you with this healing chaos energy this process of healing you know for a fact and quite frankly card two you have known this for some time that there are things that your ego i'm going to say it clearly as i'm channeling it your ego has been stopping you from letting go and releasing a sense of negativity and now it's time for you to do so and you know this okay this is all with the four of swords the four of swords is representing having a clear and stable and sturdy mind no longer allowing yourself to sink into the toxicity, to sink into the resentment, to sink into the negativity. If you're going to heal from this card too, it has to be your choice and you have to take consistent and concerted effort. No one, and, 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 I, and I mean this with all the love in the world card too, but no one is going to pull you out of the depths of your darkness 
like you could, okay? Yes, people can give you a hand, they can help you up, but that, uh, unfortunately, that's not going to last very long, you being out of the deepest holes, if you don't make an effort yourself to pull yourself out and stay out, okay? That's what this King of Cups energy is representing for you here. Last thing I wanna clarify for you is the Knight of Pentacles. What is the Knight of Pentacles for card two, please, Spirit? Wow. Okay. Uh, you do have the Page of Pentacles, but the Page of Pentacles has come out in reverse card two. And um, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I, again, I mean this with all the love in the world, but in quite, quite frankly, uh, card two, it's time for you to step up. It's time for you to, to oof. Okay. Spirit wants me to say it this way. Uh, but it's time for you to grow up a little bit. Um, it's time to come out of this page element and get into the night element, okay? The more maturity, more understanding, more drive, more focus, more ability, more strength. The thing about it, card two, is we don't mean this in a, in a condescending way. We're saying it to you like this because we know you have it within you. We know you have the capability to step out of this slightly immature energy or a, less, a younger mindset and step into a more adult mindset, stepping into a more mature mindset. And with the Knight of Pentacles, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the task is. It doesn't matter how long it's gonna take him. All he's concerned with is the fact that he is responsible for caring, for seeing something through, and he is going to do that. And that's what we're, that's what we're uh, influencing you or guiding you to move into. That's the type of energy you're being woken up into, being called into, okay? Six of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck, but this Six of Pentacles energy is absolutely about reciprocity for yourself. And what I'm feeling here for you, card two, is during this full moon, you are going to have the opportunity, the potential to put yourself in a position to get what it is that you want, to do what it is with, that you need, but to cultivate and create this sense of reciprocity for yourself. And that absolutely has to do with setting boundaries and doing the healing work that you need to do to receive that, okay? Beautiful. Next, I want to close this out for you. Card two, we're going to get you some closing guidance from the Everyday Witch Oracle. Yeah? So, all right, five shuffles for you here. Card two, this is one. This is two. This is three. Four. And five. All right, closing Oracle guidance for you, card two. Closing Oracle guidance for card two, please. There it is right there. Ooh, okay, well, I like this. You have earth magic. That's beautiful. To, look, 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 but doesn't this resemble the magician to you? This is an individual who is obviously, uh, who's lived a bit, right? They're a very mature individual. The woman on this card is a, a, is a woman of a certain age, we'll say, right? But to me, that just speaks to the amount of experience that you've had in your life up until this point, regardless of how old you are, and the wisdom that comes with it, but also the, the wisdom and the ability to use all of the skills, all of the tools at your disposal to create the reality that you want, okay? Very magician-like energy. Let's read this card. Bear with me. I do have to find it. There it is. Easy peasy. Page 27. Maybe 27 is a number for you. Okay. We're going to read the action part of this card. Take a walk and pay attention to all the growing things around you or plant some seeds in a garden or a container inside. 
There is a certain magic in starting new life in the soil, which actually is very much like the Ace of Pentacles that came out before, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, there is a certain magic in starting new life in the soil and watching it grow and blossom. For something even more practical, do something good for the earth, like planting a tree, cleaning up litter, or creating a welcoming space in your yard for birds or critters. As you do any of these things, be mindful of your connection to the element of earth and fill your heart with gratitude for her gifts. We'll also read the divination part. This card is telling you to do something magical. Magic means something different to each of us, but pick an action that seems magical to you that will connect you to the element of earth and do it today. It doesn't have to be a long, complicated ritual, although that's not a bad idea either. Magic feeds the soul as the earth nourishes our bodies. Do something magical. Your spirit will thank you. All right, card two. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please remember to get yourself engaged if this is resonating for you in a certain way. I highly, I would love, love, love to hear for you, from you. And also, if you want to return to this reading later on down the road after some things have developed and share your experience in how this turned out for you or how this ended up resonating for you, again, I would love to hear about that. I love hearing from you guys and I love creating a conversation. So let's talk about it. Yeah, this is the community. This is who we are. This is a safe space. You are welcome here. Your opinion is welcome here. Your voice is welcome here. Yeah. With that said, I hope you guys have a great moon cycle and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hey there! Alright, so if you have chosen card number three, then this message is for you. We're going to start with the Moonology deck. Uh, I'm going to give this three shuffles here, and we will see what your overall theme to start with for is for you. What are you manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius? Yeah? One. Oh, try that again. One. For card number three, messages for those who chose card number three. This is two. And this is three. All right. So card number three. What are you manifesting with this full moon in Sagittarius? Here we go. What are you manifesting here? All right. So the card that you have here so far is one card so far, the full moon. All right. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty poignant, huh? <laughs> but it says surrender, surrender to the divine. So what I was getting for you when this card first came out, uh, card number three, um, there is a lot of fear. There is a lot of doubt. There is a lot of worry. Uh, for some of you, you are literally in this energy of manifesting some sort of business, a form of a business or um, a new career path, a new job, maybe a, 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 a raise um, or something like that, or just something that that is something that I'm feeling like here is very strong for you, card number three. Um, and you're all wrapped up in your head about how this process is going to play out, all of the different things you may have to do to get this job done, to get this rolling, to get this off the ground, whatever this is for you, or whatever it is you're just wanting to create in your life. I feel like there is a very deep desire to create something new, but you're kind of oh, getting overwhelmed in all of the ways that you may be having to act or follow through with what it is you're trying to manifest. Uh, for example, I'm getting the I'm getting the, the the image of like doing a bunch of research to figure out even how you would go about it and then coming across all these different um, pathways or all these different processes or all these different things that you'll have to get in order in order for this to work and it's scaring you a little bit but the pro the, the the message here for you so far is to just surrender surrender to the divine for others of you this is a very strong message coming from the divine in which they are asking you to just surrender you're putting up too much of a fight okay in some way, shape, or form. Let's get some more here. What else do we have for card number three in terms of what it is they are manifesting in this full moon? Okay, well, another card hasn't come out, but uh, another example has come out. Um, so what I'm getting from, from, this, from this 
energy here for some of you is that you've worked with full moons in the past. You've worked on um, using magic or using, you know, elemental energies or what or just the moon cycles to manifest things. But it, your ego has gotten in the way in the past. And that's why things have not worked out for you the way that you had expected or the way that you'd wanted or the way that you had planned. Because you were trying to do too much to control the outcome, which is literally out of your control. All you can really do is request what it is that you want or need from the divine and take your actions, do what it is you need to do, step into that, uh, that, that, that vibration and do certain things, uh, get yourself prepared for that manifestation to come in. But in terms of how it comes in or when it comes in, that is not in your control. That is out of your control. And this is why you are needing to, to, to surrender to the divine here, okay? So if if you have a certain process or a ritual that you, or, or, or a certain thing that you're working on manifesting within these full moon energies, do your part, take your action steps, but then leave the rest to the divine, okay? For others of you, there are some things that you are trying to manifest using these moon cycles that are not even close to what you need to be manifesting or what it is you actually need in your life. I am getting an energy for some of you that you're, approaching magic and mystical energies from a slightly um, uh, immature point of view in terms of, well, I can use magic to get whatever it is that I want. Mm, I mean, technically, yeah, that could be a thing, but you're not always going to, it's just like the Rolling Stones said, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you'll get what you need. And so for some of you, you're needing to realign with what it is you're trying to manifest in your life, because some of the things that you're trying to manifest are purely from an egoic point of view, and it is not going to do anything for your soul in terms of expansion and development and greater awareness. In some cases, the reason why you are not receiving what it is you're trying to manifest is because it's actually going to have an adverse effect on you, on your life life and on your soul. And quite frankly, there are some of you that are being so bullheaded with this that you're just going to keep trying until eventually the divine is going to give you exactly what you asked for. And you're going to turn around and be like, this is this, 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 I'm, I am in a much worse place now than I were before. And your higher self is going to turn around and look at you like, yeah, I tried to tell you that, but you didn't want to listen. So here we are. Now you got to clean up the mess, right? So I, no tea, no shade. I'm not coming for nobody right now. I'm just trying to deliver the messages that are coming through for you, okay? Let's see if we can get anything else from the Moonology deck here. Anything else for card number three? For those of you that have chosen card number three, any more messages from the Moonology deck? Nope, that's it. Clear and bright as day. Anything that we have? Okay, well, look, there. here's the last one <laughs> for you, card three. It's time to release negativity. Okay, now first and foremost, this is already connected to card number two, so you might want to watch that. Secondly, whatever the, the message that came through for card number two was also kind of related to card number one. So if you want to watch all three, shit, if you want to watch all five, go ahead and do it. But there may be some other messages in those separate readings for you. Yeah? Let's move forward. Okay, we're going to get some guidance now, some keywords. Uh, things to look out for, things to keep in the forefront of your mind, and we're going to get that from the Sacred Destiny deck, yeah? Five shuffles here. Okay, one. Messages for card number three. What are you manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius? Woo! That card wants to come out, so we're going to take it. Solitude. Oh, shit. This is two. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Yikes. All right, this is three. This is four. And this is five. All right. Let's start with looking at what's at the bottom of the deck here. You do have happiness. Okay, that's beautiful. You have the opportunity to manifest a lot more happiness with it within your life. But this, whatever happiness that you have the opportunity to manifest for you is going to need to come from a moment of solitude. Okay, there are some and, and, and this actually could really be resonating on a love tip for some of you because I'm going to be straight up and honest. Listen here, if you are new to me and new to my channel. Hi, my name is Eric. It's so nice to meet you. But also you need to know that I'm not the type of reader that's going to sugarcoat anything for you. Like I'm going to be as real with you as I possibly can while still being respectful. And it's my respect for you as a being, as an individual that 
influences me to be real, straight up, and honest with you because I am not here to sugarcoat things. I am not here to fill you with a false sense of hope. I am here to channel the messages that you need to hear to help you get to be the strongest, most vibrant, most uh, beneficial and best version of yourself that you possibly can be. And that means sometimes I have to, d to, to, to deliver some tough messages. And this seems to be like one of those situations. But please understand that I am coming from a place of love and respect for you, okay? Now, in terms of some of these things that you've been trying to manifest, this does resonate on a love tip. You've been trying to work with sex magic or um, love spells and stuff like that to get people, to get someone, a specific person, whether this be a twin flame or just somebody that you're interested in and have feelings for. You're trying to manipulate, in some cases for some of you, you're trying to use the energies at your disposal, the, the magical energies or whatnot, to... Uh, to uh, realize egoic pursuits, but also to manipulate the free world will of another being. And let me tell you, honey, that is the first and best way to get your shit wrecked, okay? That karma is gonna come back on you and baby, you don't want it, all right? So in order for you to really get into this vibe, in order for you to manifest the true happiness that you really, truly, and honestly deserve in this lifetime, you are going to have to go through a process of solitude. And this solitude is going to help you, help connect you with what it is that you truly want and desire. Sorry guys, hold on. Dance break. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Sorry, what it is you truly want and desire, but see, you're going to need to go through this process of solitude so that it, you can understand what that truly means for you. For some of you, I really do feel like whatever it is you've been trying to manifest has been a coping mechanism, has been a distraction from you actually doing the work that is necessary for you to be a whole and complete being to then be able to be open enough to receive the happiness that you truly desire. I just saw 1010 on the counter. That is an excellent number. You might want to look up the meaning of that 10 10 uh, it's also tens are a number of completion so I do feel like this full moon in Sagittarius is bringing you towards a greater sense of completion and quite frankly this makes a whole lot of sense because this full moon is in fact in Sagittarius Sagittarius is the sign of deep wisdom higher learning higher understanding and deep philosophical topics also about communication and travel and business and and, and like uh, and, and all that good stuff okay so there's that, all right? So, okay, let's get some more here. What other messages do we have for card three? Take those. Okay. Okay, excellent. At the bottom of the deck, you guys, purification. Okay, there is a lot of toxic, devilish energy, 1111 on the counter. There is a lot of toxic and devilish energy that you are wrapped up in right now. And let me tell you something, baby, I am not trying to place any blame. I'm not trying to shame you. I'm not trying to guilt you, honey, but this toxic energy has got to go. And that's why you have this solitude here. Okay, you've got to be with yourself. You've got to give yourself the time to clear out this toxic energies because it's these toxic energies. It's this. Uh, it's these toxic energies that are influencing you to roll with or pursuit or go after pursue lower vibrational situations, uh, uh, relationships with people that really are just not right for you, that are only going to do more to rip you to shreds. And we do not want that. Okay, we want you to be whole, happy, safe, healthy, and loved for the being that you are, okay? But in order to get down to being loved by the for the being that you are, you have to understand the being that you are to begin with. And that's where this solitude comes into play. And that's also where this process of purification comes into play. So if you're still inclined to do to do moon rituals, that's great. I am definitely not trying to discourage that within you, but I'm just, I'm trying to help you refocus that energy. Instead of trying to get someone external to you to do something that you want them to do, work on these, use this energy to manifest an opportunity for you to do what is right for you. Take the focus off of someone else and put that focus on you. How can you be whole? How can you be healed? How can you manifest your own justice? When we get into the tar tarot, I wonder if justice comes out. But let's talk about these other cards here. You do have going forward. You also have that with embracing. 
okay? You have to embrace the reality that you find yourself in right now. You have to embrace what it is that you see around you. You have to own it. And then you have to surrender to the divine and move forward. Yes? Now, we're all talking about this, but this, I want you to keep this in the frame of mind of this is what the full moon, this is the opportunity that this full moon in Sagittarius is providing for you at this moment, okay? And the, the, the main, the key word that I really want to point out here for you is this is about deeper, okay, I'm sorry, key phrase, deeper self-awareness, yes? We have three more cards here. Oh, beautiful. You do have love, so okay, love is coming through for you here, but this is self-love, baby boo. You have wisdom and you have gateway. I mean, this makes perfect sense because you know this is a full moon. Any full moon is a gateway, a uh, potential gateway to manifestation and all that good stuff. But this is definitely a gateway for you in terms of personal self-awareness and healing, okay? You have to... you. you it, <laughs> Connect with the wisdom, the truth of love instead and find that within yourself. All right. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. We're going to move forward here. Uh, I'm going to move to the tarot here for you. And for you, card number three, we are going to be using the witch's tarot. Yeah, I'm going to give this five shuffles. And we'll get some messages from the tarot for you here. Yes, one. Try again. One. Messages for card three. What are you manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius? This is two. This is three. Four. Card number three. And this is shuffle number five. Oh, try that one more time. Five. All right. Card number three. Messages for you. Full moon in Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Okay. Messages for card number three, please, spirit. card number three overall energy you do have karma in this deck which is also the same as judgment okay it's time for you to wake up this is a big awake this is big a big wake up call for you and what's been helping you to receive this wake up call you have all major arcana here besides what's underneath the judgment okay but this is major arcana but um What's been providing you with this wake-up call is the Hierophant, all right? The Hierophant is representing for you massive struggles, ego struggles, okay? Uh, especially struggles when it comes into love, but uh, comes in terms of love, but really tough lessons and lessons that you can't avoid, avoid. lessons that you have got, absolutely have to resonate or, or go through. You have to go through these lessons in order for you to reach the higher awareness, all right? You kind of have to, in some cases, maybe we can call this a hazing process. All right, fine. Take it as it resonates or take that with a grain of salt. But uh, the tough situations, the tough circumstances that you have been in up until this point have really been teaching you something, have really been trying to teach you to get into balance and integration with yourself. You now have the chariot and the chariot represents taking, getting your emotions in place, getting your emotions balanced, getting opposing sides of yourself balanced, harmonized and integrated, even doing shadow work to get this balance between yourself, the sides of yourself so that you can use this balance to move you forward towards what it is you want to be doing, what it is you want to receive in your life, what it is you want to manifest. You have this with the star and then finally the eight of wands, okay? This is a really beautiful thing. Now the eight of wands and the chariot are two very similar energies, very fast moving energies. But what I feel like here is, even though you may not necessarily understand it at first, even though you may not necessarily be aware of it fa at first or aware of why things are happening or why you have to go through certain processes. Okay, sorry guys, I'm trying to 
adjust the camera here a little bit. But um, ultimately, it's going to serve a purpose in the end. And that's what the star is representing for you here. So some of you are actually at this point feeling like you've been led astray. You know, there have been some uh, spiritual teachers or really uh, or some elements of like a, a type of wise counsel, maybe even divine counsel, what you considered divine counsel at the time that has led you to where you are now. And you're kind of wondering why things have turned out the way that they have. But ultimately, you were, be, you were being initiated into the process of being the man, master manifester in your life, of being the, the soul provider. Okay, that's interesting. But not... Um, relying on any sort of establishment, not relying on any sort of established energy energies or institutions or um, collective ways of thinking or hive mind ways of thinking. You how were be you had to go through this process pile th or card three in order for you to get this balance with yourself. Get this balance within yourself, okay? Listening to the advice of others, listening to the guidance of other, others, listening to the instruction of others, taking that in, following through with it, but then only ultimately to realize or find out that that wasn't the right thing for you because it didn't necessarily resonate with your soul, with your higher wisdom, with your intuition. And now you're getting to the place where you're, you're in the process, whether you choose to or not, remember that we do still have free will here, okay? But if you choose to really work with this, you have the opportunity to get yourself balanced, go through the healing, but then also open up the doors of opportunity to get you to the healing or the, 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 the wish fulfillment that you actually do seek the star, all right? Okay, let's get some clarification. I want to clarify the Hierophant for you, for sure. Okay, uh, three shuffles here for you, yeah? One, two, and three. For card number three, let's get some clarification. All right, so I want to clarify the Hierophant, or in this deck, it's the High Priestess. What's the Hierophant for card number three, please? Good. This is very, very good. This is very, 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 very good. Card three. Look at that. I asked you, I said, you guys remember in the beginning of this, I said, I wonder if justice is going to come out for you guys. Well, shit, here you go. There's your justice. Now, hold on. Whoops. Pump the brakes for a second, because yes, for some of you, there is going to be some karmic backlash that is about to hit you or that needs to hit you. It's all part of the lesson. Don't freak out. You're going to be okay. Just take it for what it is. Learn that, learn from it and move forward. But for others of you, well, actually, no, not for others of you, regardless of how this works out for you, for all of you, there is going to be a balance of energies there is going to be karmic justice for you and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting the shit end of the stick that also means that in some cases you will be you will receive the retribution and the vindication that you deserve that you require to move forward in your life okay first thing that has come out here though for you in terms of clarifying the hierophant is in fact the six of wands so what i what i feel like here is for you card three if you have reached this reading and this is resonating for you then quite frankly whether you see it or whether you find yourself there at this moment or not you will be victorious why because you will have graduated from this lesson that's definitely what i'm seeing with the six of wands you have three other cards oh my god would you look at this you have the ace of swords and the fool this is you retaining, acquiring and retaining the lesson, the meaning of all of this for yourself and moving on to the next cycle. This is absolutely a graduation type energy. You don't have, as long as you take with you the wisdom and the understanding, the truth that is represented here for you or that you've been working on learning here in this lesson, Ace of Swords, as long as you take that with you, you will be successful moving forward, okay, to the full. Finally, you have one last card here. Oh, shoot. It's the King of Swords. Okay. This is you cutting ties. 
This is you cutting ties with all of the toxic bullshit, all of the waste of your time, all the waste of your energy, and all of the, the, the trying to control too much. This is you with the, eight, the King of Swords, especially with the Ace of Swords. And then you also have a sword here, the Sword of Justice, right? Uh, this is you taking that wisdom and moving forward with it. See, in the King of Swords, is, I'm getting specifically with the King of Swords, is seeing the truth of the matter, seeing exactly what this is for you, seeing it as clearly as day, no if, ands, or buts, just the straight facts and moving forward with that, okay? If you find yourself here in this reading and this is resonating for you, then this is what is coming forward for you in this full moon. Claim it. Own it. Yes, if you need to, claim it down in the comments. Let me know that you chose card number three and that you claim this message because this is a beautiful development for you, okay? Do that physical affirmation if you feel it's necessary. Even if you don't feel it's necessary, do it anyway if you want to because it will definitely help you. It will help to reinforce this for you, all right? Um, let's see. We're going to clarify the star here for you. What are the energies of the star for card number three? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, okay. Okay. Oh my God. Yes. All right. So at the bottom of the deck, you do have the nine of swords. Okay. That makes sense. Especially when it comes to the energies of the star, because you don't exactly know how things are going to happen. You don't think know how or when or why things are going to work out, but they ultimately do anyway. Do not let this fear and the illusion stop you. All right. You do have the page of pentacles and the page of pentacles fell out on purification. Okay. So you're going through this period of purification. That's going to start you on a new path. And when you and with that, you do also have the knight of pentacles. So you're going to have have to take this slowly but surely all right in this new process you have to take it step by step you can't let anything slide you have to handle each and every point that comes up and clear that out of the way before you move forward to the next step but ultimately the star is representing the hermit with the nine of cups so you have the star which is a card of wish fulfillment Ooh, thunder the star which is a card of wish fulfillment clarified by the nine of cups, which is another card of wish fulfillment, okay? But this wish fulfillment, this satisfaction, this happiness, and this contentment, the healing that is coming through for you during this full moon with the star energy that's leading you to what it is you truly desire in life comes from a state of self-awareness, card number three. In order for you to get to that state of self-awareness, you're gonna have to dig down in the depths and dig up some shit that you haven't looked at for a while. But I promise you, it's going to be beneficial. All right? Excellent. All right, card three. We are going to close out this reading for you with some oracle guidance. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, hold on. I need to find that. Where's the book? What did I do with the book? Oh, Lord. Did I put it back in the... Nope, here it is. Ha, ha, ha. Sorry about that. We're going to clear, close out this reading with some oracle guidance from the Everyday Witch Oracle. Yeah? Here we go. Five shuffles. One, two, three. Closing Oracle message for card number three. Four, and five. All righty. Closing Oracle message for you, card number three. Let's get it. There it is right there. Wow. Well, this is on point. Prayers and wishes. Okay, just a moment. I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Hold on. Um, would that be air? Yes, it is. All right. Card number 47. Okay. The action of this card says, think about what you really need or want in your life. Not the little things, but the stuff that is really important to you. Then, as many of us did when we were children, 
Wait for the first star to rise in the night sky and send your wish out with all your energy, saying, Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Wish I may, wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. But I want you guys to really hear that this is not about the little things. This is not the the the, the, the trivial things, the 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 you know the fancy car or the new system or this, that, and the third. No, what do you really need? Wish for that. Like I said, like Rolling Stones said, you can't always get what you want, but you get what you need, right? Okay. The divination of this card says. If you get this card, it may be telling you it is time to ask for help from a greater source, or perhaps it is a hint that you should put more energy behind the prayers and wishes that really matter to you and start working on those wishes coming true. All right, card three, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Please, please, please let me know down in the comments how this resonated, if this worked out for you. Um, if you, you want to come back to this later on, later on down the road after things have had time to develop a little bit more and share how this has resonated for you or share how this has worked out for you. I highly encourage you guys to do that. I love hearing for you. And this is a safe space, okay? So like if you feel inclined to share your your story with the collective, there's me and there are plenty of other people here that would love to discuss this with you, love to provide you with loving, positive and supportive energy. So please don't be afraid to share your thoughts and feelings in the comments section. With that said, I hope you have a fantastic moon cycle and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah? Bye! <laughs> Well, hello there. If you have chosen card number four, then this message is for you. Yes, we are going to start with the Moonology deck and we're going to get your overall energy in terms of what it is you are manifesting during this full moon in Sagittarius. Yeah? Four shuffles for you. One messages for those who have chosen card number four. This is two. This is three. Oh, one more time. This is three. And this is four. All right, card number four. So what are you manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius? Yeah, here we go. What are you manifesting card number four? All right. You have interesting card number four. You have the same card that came out for card number three. Surrender to the divine. You might want to watch that video or that, that reading. But I actually, before I go any further here. Oh. Okay, so now, because I'm looking at the bottom of the deck, and what you have at the bottom of the deck so far is show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. And I actually, I believe it was card number one that got a reading just, that got a very similar energy. And it's very funny. Okay, you actually, instead of watching card number two, no, I'm sorry, instead of watching card number three, I feel like uh, right now you should probably also watch card number one because already I'm feeling like the energies are similar. And specifically, I was getting an Aquarius energy from card number one. And we did not have this one that actually literally said Aquarius on it, okay? So in terms of how you're needing to surrender to the divine, you do have show the world the real you. So you guys are on the verge of on the precipice of stepping into a new phase in your life in which a greater sense of authenticity is coming through and there's a hell of a lot of fear and apprehension around it. The biggest thing that I'm picking up for you, card number four, is what are other people going to think? <laughs> Listen here, baby. If you're new to me, then you don't know. If y'all if you, if you, if know me, then you know. I don't give a damn what other people think. I don't give a damn what other people say because quite frankly, your form of self authentic self-expression is way more important to your life, to the health of your soul and to the, to the development of your soul than what anybody else has to say about it. And something that I say all the time, you guys, and if you know me, you know this, you can say it with me. Opinions are like, what? That's right, assholes. Everybody's got one. So the fuck what? Be you, baby. Yeah? Let's see what else you have here. What are you manifesting, card number four, in this full moon in Sagittarius? 
Well, this is beautiful. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is also definitely connected to card number one because here now at the bottom of the deck, you do have your commitment is being tested. And that's definitely something that came through for card number one. Okay. But see your commitment to yourself, your commitment to your self-expression, your commitment to your personal path and your spiritual journey is being is it is being uh tested okay and yeah i do feel very specifically for you guys that you are up against some real tough shit i want to say there is a lot of there could be the potential for a lot of opposition or maybe even backlash for you in terms of being your authentic self stepping up to the plate surrendering to the divine and surrendering to whatever is you're being guided towards or being pushed towards in your life there's a lot of potential opposition but quite frankly, that is part of the path, card three, uh, I'm sorry, card four, okay? Like, <clears throat> you're not always going to know how things are going to work out, and you're not always going to be popular with people, and like, everybody doesn't have to agree with you, everybody doesn't have to share your position or your stance on things, and yes, sometimes when you really stand up for yourself and you do what you know is right for yourself and you stay true to yourself, it may look like, on the surface, all of a sudden, now your whole life is falling apart. But quite frankly, what is falling apart are the situations, the circumstances, and the relationships that no longer serve you, that have no place in your life anymore. Because when you, when you choose to stay true to yourself, when you, stay, you choose to stay committed to who you are and what it is you need to, you know that you need to do in your life, or at least what it is you're being guided to do in your life, even though at first some, thing may, some things may get chaotic and it looks like things are crumbling, you are being set up for what is meant for you, what is truly meant for you to come into your life. And I, I once, once we get into the, ta the tarot, I wouldn't be surprised if the tower came out for you because that's what I'm feeling in this energy right now. You are facing, quite literally, you are facing the destruction of everything in your life that you once knew it to be. But whatever falls away, whatever is actually destroyed or removed from your life is taking up space for what is truly meant for you at this time. So that is why you are being asked to surrender to the divine because the divine has a higher plan. The divine sees things from a higher perspective that our conscious and egoic minds couldn't even begin to fathom. The divine knows a way, has a plan for how things are going to work out for you for your highest good but in order for that to happen five 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 on the counter in order for that to happen card four you are going to have to surrender okay surrender to the process surrender to the, your intuition um message p.s there is a storm rolling in i was while i was doing card three's reading i heard a large crack of thunder so and it's getting closer like the sky is really darkening up right now so it could start raining anytime soon i just want to put that put you onto that but that ain't stopping us honey mm -mm, we gonna keep on trucking all right <laughs> the last two cards that came out for this pile for you are communication is key and a win-win forecast uh, i'm sorry a win-win outcome is forecast so I feel like many of you are being asked to communicate here and you're being asked to communicate from a much more authentic and truthful place. All right. You're being asked to be to be truthful on how it is that you feel or what it is that you want to be doing. Oh, yeah. The rain is coming. Wait, I just got a really awesome, cool breeze through the door. <laughs> anyway, um, you're being asked to communicate. You're being asked to share your truth, Pile 4. And I understand that in some cases, especially if this is uh, if this is resonating for you on a relationship level, even if it's like a, a marriage or a strong long term commitment, you are being asked to communicate. You're not going to be able to get what you want or need out of life or from the people around you or the circumstances around you if you don't speak up. OK, this is the this is that 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 um, that phrase or that saying, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. And for some of you out here, you are specifically afraid of opening your mouth and speaking your truth because of the potential destruction that will ensue. Look, and like I said before, anything that is destroyed in your life in this process or during this moment needs to be let go of. OK, so even if it looks like it's all doom and gloom and the sky is falling and the whole world is about to explode, quite frankly, a win win forecast. I'm sorry, a win win outcome is forecast here, no matter how it may look 
right now or even the, the moment that you that you let's say the moment that you open your mouth and speak your truth it may look like a immense catastrophe at that oh shit Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. All right. All right, pilot card four. Like, shit's getting real, man. But look at this. And check it out, you guys. Even if it looks like a catastrophe now, you don't ultimately are, do not know how it's going to work out or what the divine has in store for you moving forward. Oh, shit. Moving forward. I'm getting all kinds of excited and crazy here. But like, and then think about it, you guys. When you look at the tower card in the tarot, what is it represented? What is it symbolized by? It's a massive tower that gets struck by a bolt of lightning. Like, you can't make this shit up, you guys. Come on now. <laughs> okay, we're going to move forward here. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. That was really loud and it scared the absolute, I mean, the absolute shit out of me. Like, I saw it. I saw the flash. and was like, uh-oh. And then the sound. But okay. We're going to keep it pushing, honey. And we're going to get to, we're going to move to the Sacred Destiny deck. And we're going to get you some messages here um, in terms of things to look out for or keywords for your for this full moon in Sagittarius for you, yeah? Four shuffles. One. Two. Oh, try that again. This is two. Three. For card number four. Messages for card number four. This is four. All right, card number four. Let's see what messages we have for you in terms of this full moon in Sagittarius with the Sacred Destiny deck. Yes, ma'am. Yes, indeed. Okay. Excellent. All right, look, 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 look. Ooh. Honey, at the bottom of the deck, you've got healing chaos. Now, I, I am picking up on here, card number four. You you see this coming. You may not see it coming, but you also may feel it coming. You know this is gonna be a crazy process. There's some shit that's gonna be brought up here, and it's not going to it's not gonna be tasty. It is not going to feel good, and it's not going to be easy to deal with. That's fine. It's part of the process. It's necessary right but i want also i also before i go any further before i say anything else you do have success here okay and you also have a win-win outcome is forecast card number four you are being encouraged to surrender to the your to, to the divine surrender to your higher self surrender to your intuition surrender to what it is you're being guided to do and push forward just do it 11 11 on the counter card for because success is in the future for you now that may not look the way you want it to look or the way your ego says it should look right now but it is coming but the only way for you to achieve this success is for you to surrender and do what it is that you are being guided to do communicate speak your truth speak authentic authentic <laughs> speak authentically there it is now you do have freedom, and you also have that with going forward, okay? This also, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, card four, this mostly feels like an interpersonal relationship type of situation, but but most, but for some of you, this is definitely feeling like love, a, love, a loving relationship or a love connection. Um, there is something that's been restricting you, card number four period. There's something that's been restricting you. There is a lack of authenticity. There's a lack of a sense of being able to be yourself. And whatever it is you're being asked to surrender into and to just follow through with, it's going to bring you success. It's going to bring a win-win a, a outcome because it's going to bring you freedom. Freedom, card number four. The freedom to be yourself. The freedom to be authentic. The freedom to be expressive. The freedom to share your feelings honor your feelings. Some of you may be in a really toxic relationship right now in which you are being manipulated and gaslit into not validating your own feelings. And let me tell you, honey, let me tell you something, honey, that's some bullshit right there. Okay. I ain't trying to hear that for you no more. I want you to be free. The divine wants you to be free. The divine wants you to move forward authentically. That is where you're going to find your success, no matter what it looks like on the surface right now. Okay. 
Excellent. Let's move into the tarot here for you. And for you, card four, I have chosen, we're going to be working with the fairy tarot deck. Yes? So let's get into this here. Uh, five shuffles. You have to bear with me because I have not used this deck in a long time. Okay, five shuffles. One. <laughs> this is two. This is three. For card number four, this is four, Whoop. four, oh come on now, try that again, four, there we go, third time's a charm, and five, yeah, I can definitely smell the rain now, woo, okay, this is five. Alrighty, kids, so what message do we have for card number four in terms of what you are manifesting with this full moon in Sagittarius? Card number four, the spirit, what messages do you have from the turn on? Oh, beautiful. All right. Ooh. Okay. All right. Wait, oh, we have one more. Okay. Overall energy, you have card number 15, which in this deck is ego, but this is also, this also equates to the devil. And you see how, yeah, it's raining now, you guys. You see how these two are burning things? They're burning contracts. And the car, and underneath the card, it says the illusion of being trapped, placing too much importance on material items, getting caught up in fear and worry. And that's exactly what's going on here. Now, there are some contracts and, and, and certain things that are being burned in this in this depiction. And I like that because here it definitely feels like you are you are erasing certain things and starting over. You are you are now bringing certain contracts or certain agreements with people that you have had whether this be business or this be relationship, um, you're, you're, it's almost as if you're renegotiating these terms. And for some of you, your freedom is going to come from the fact that this person or your partner is not going to go along with it and you're going to be able to get up and get the fuck out. And that's where your victory lies. For others of you, you will be able to work this out. You will be able to, re to, 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 to rework the, the, the terms of your contract or your agreement with each other, your soul contract with each other, okay? Now, before I move any further, you have two more cards, card four, that are assuring victory for you. The sun and the six of wands, or in this deck, it's the six of spring, okay? I mean, I don't even want to read any more into that. I just want to leave it right there. You also have now the four of winter or the four of swords and the magician, okay? So get very clear on what it is that you want. Four of swords. All right. Allow yourself to settle into this energy of reassurance and and confidence and uh, certainty that regardless of how things work out in the, in the fine details, you ultimately are going to be successful. Allow yourself to sink into that. You have one, two, four cards here that are speaking to success for you, okay? The divine is really trying to push you to do what it is that you are being guided to do. Do what it is that you know that you need to do. Because ultimately, again, I keep saying this and I'm gonna keep saying it as much as I have to, regardless as to the way things work out in the fine details or over time or whatever, over time, you are going to be successful. So allow yourself to sink into that energy, get comfortable there and just expect it and then and then let go and clear your mind and focus on what it is you actually do want to manifest, okay? For some of you, the, the good thing for you to do here would be to think about this first. Uh, get your intentions set and straight before you before you reach out and have whatever conversation or communicate whatever it is you need to communicate that you're being asked to communicate, okay? Um, but really set your intentions, get your intentions straight and then focus on fulfilling that, following through with that, letting go of any sort of fears of failure. All right. I'm going to look at, no, okay, never mind. Um, well, okay, no, that's it. Uh, yeah, let's get into some clarity here. Okay. What I want to clarify for you 
Card number four is the Four of Winter or the Four of Swords. Three shuffles here. One. This is two. Some clarity for card number... Oh, shit, you guys. Look. Look. I told you, man. I'm trying to shuffle and look at what wanted to pop out. There it is. The tower. All right? It's here. It's happening, you guys. You don't need to be afraid of it. Okay, you do not need to fear this because whatever is being removed from your life, whatever is about to be destroyed is going to help you, is going to clear the space and help you so that you can rebuild something better. Three of Pentacles, okay? All right, so clarity on the Four of Swords here. Three shuffles. One. You know, the beauty of this storm that's happening right now is that it didn't rain yesterday and it's been, I'm, I live in Puerto Rico um, and it, it, we're getting into the rainy season and typically it rains every day, but it didn't rain yesterday during this time period. It didn't rain yesterday and it was hot as all get out all yesterday and all this afternoon. And now we have this cold front coming in that is creating this storm and it's powerful. It's powerful and I love it. All right, this is three. Alrighty, kids, so I want to clarify the Four of Swords for you, and shit, guys, the tower is still at the bottom of the deck. Okay, powerful message there. Take it as it resonates. What is the Four of Swords for card number four, please? Okay, oh, that one too. All right. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Two of Cups. So yes, this is about an interpersonal relationship for you. Definitely, for some of you, this is this is romantic, all right? But the thing that I'm getting with this Two of Cups is you are learning, you're in the process of learning how to really align with another person so that it's balanced, harmonious, and integrated. If this message is resonating for you on a romantic level, I feel very strongly that you are in a position or in a relationship in which it's one-sided, okay? It, this might be a narcissist empathic uh, dynamic. I'm not trying to throw labels out there. I'm not trying to label you or your partner. Um, if that resonates with you, then take it as it resonates. If it, if it rings a bell for you, then take it as it resonates. But what I'm getting with the Two of Cups is learning how to really be in a balanced and harmonious relationship with somebody. And this, to be honest with you, card number four, this is the very one of the first steps to learning this deep lesson because in order for you to really be in a balanced and harmonious and healthy relationship with someone, you have to be able to feel comfortable speaking your truth and sharing your emotions. And really, quite frankly, you guys, there's only one way to find out about that. You share your emotions and either they're with it or they're not. And if they're not, bye-bye. You know what I'm saying? So that's the situation here for you. That's what Four of Swords is representing as an overall energy. You do have, clarifying that, you do have the world and the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups came out in reverse. Uh, not in reverse, I'm sorry. It came out face down. So there is a bit of internal, that's a little bit of an internal energy. And I feel like that's speaking more to, oh, here comes the real rain. Holy shit. Okay. Um, I feel like that's really speaking to uh, your sense of internal confusion in terms of what's actually going to happen if I speak my truth. It's also a sense of internal confusion when it comes to all of the feelings that you have going on within you that you haven't been able to express, okay? But the world is here to say that that situation is coming to an end. So when it comes to the Four of Swords, when it comes to you sitting down, getting your mind clear and, 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 and focusing on what it is you truly want, this is clarified by the world and the Seven of Cups. You have to take some time to um, sit down and focus on what it is that's swirling around within you and make sense of it. And then from there, you communicate that. Okay, you work on bringing this partnership or this bond together. And again, if this person that you're with is not receptive to this, you need to just cut them loose. Okay, it is not your sense of dignity and your sense of self is not worth being with someone that does not honor that within you. Especially if you have children. I don't know where this is coming from, but if you have children and you are, you are still with their, their uh, maternal father or their maternal mother, uh, their, I'm sorry, <laughs> 
if you're still with their father or their mother or you are um, you have children but you are a single parent but you're dating someone and that person is disrespecting you is not allowing you to be heard is not honoring your voice is not honoring your truth quite frankly the question here is what are you showing your children now I am not a parent yet I don't, and I, I, I cannot stand here and say that I have that experience. I don't. But at the same time, there's truth to that. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just trying to say that was a message that came through. So please don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> All right. I do want to clarify one last thing for you. And we, we're going to clarify the magician here. What's the magician for card number four? You guys, look. The tower again. <laughs> Fancy that. Okay, but with this came the Five of Cups. So like I said, the Magician and the Four of Swords came out together. And to me, that was talking about you needing to get really clear on what it is that you want so that you can manifest it. And currently, right now, what's standing in the way of you being in the master manifester position is your own self of sense of sorrow and I heard also self-doubt. Now, it's so perfect that this came out with the tower again, because what is spilling out in the five of cups traditionally, those three cups that have spilled out, that's some shit that you don't need any longer. Things that you need to let go of, things that are hindering you, things that are holding you back, things that are holding you down. But all is not lost with the five of cups because you still have the two cups standing behind you upright and full ready for you to turn dry your eyes turn around grab it and keep on moving and also those two cups standing behind you are representative of the two of cups that just came out a few moments ago you no matter what is spilling out in your life right now no matter what is about to change for you card number four you will always have yourself and the divine at your side you never have to worry okay so you got to take this moment to clear up whatever is standing in your way and let this tower fall. Always, of course, take them, take your time and allow yourself to go through the grieving process. All right. We're not, we ain't standing here trying to tell you bitch to suck it up and dry your eyes and just keep moving. No, we are definitely not saying that. We are saying go through your grieving process, feel your feelings process them and transmute them okay allow yourself the time to grieve allow yourself to time to heal and then when you're ready get yourself up pick yourself up dry up your eyes maybe take a shower change your clothes and get to stepping honey because you got places to go okay you got things to manifest baby you got a life to live let's get on with it yes all right we are going to close this out for you with oracle guidance from the the everyday witch oracle yeah all right four shuffles for you pile of card number four this is one this is two this is three And this is four. All right, closing Oracle guidance for card number four, please, Spirit, in terms of what are you manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius? Closing Oracle guidance, there she is. Oh, look at that. Okay, so you got the same card as card number four. I'm sorry, card number three. Prayers and wishes. So maybe you do wanna watch card number three. Okay. Now this was, which page was this? Bear with me guys. Air, prayer, yeah, 47, okay. All right, so the action of this card says, if you get, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Think about what you really want or need in your life. Not the little things, but the stuff that is really important to you, then, as many of us did when we were children, wait for the first star to rise in the night sky and send your wish out with all your energy, saying, starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. 
Wish I may, wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. And the divination of this card says, if you get this card, it may be telling you it is time to ask for help from a greater source. Or perhaps it is a hint that you should put more energy behind the prayers and wishes that really matter to you and start working on making those wishes come true. All right. So there you have it, Card 4. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope, I truly, truly hope that this was helpful for you, yeah? Uh, and I also encourage you guys to let me know how this resonates for you down in the description, or not the description, the comment section below. Um, and let me know, let me know which one you picked and let me know how that resonated. But also if you wanna come back to this later on and let me know how things turned out for you or how this ended up resonating for you, I would love to hear from you. I love hearing from you guys. If you, re feel e if you really feel like you wanna reach out and share your story, I highly encourage you to do so. This is a very loving, supportive, and inclusive and accepting community here at Divine Conversations. This is a safe space for you. And if I'm not the one that, that is able to reach out and respond to your comment or send you some words of guidance or, in, or wisdom, there are plenty of others in this collective that would be happy to do so. So please do not ever feel like you are burdening anyone or that you are not welcome here. You are welcome here. Your story is welcome here. And in, quite frankly, it might help somebody else too, okay? So I encourage everybody to share. But with that... I hope you have a fantastic moon cycle. I love you all so very much, and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah? Bye! Hello, dear one. If you have chosen card number five, then this message is for you. Yes, we're going to be looking at what you are manifesting through this full moon in Sagittarius. Uh, just before we begin, I want to make sure that um, I'm clear. I, it is raining a little bit, of which I'm sure you can hear. Um, and it's a pretty powerful storm, or at least it was when it first started. There was this crazy crack of thunder and all kinds of madness, but it was awesome. I loved it. Scared the shit out of me, but I loved it. But anyway, it's raining right now. It might rain a little bit harder. I'm going to do my best to speak over the rain so that it doesn't affect the reading but a lot of people say that it sounds great in the background so we're gonna keep it yeah all right card number five let's get into this here we're gonna start with the moonology deck and we are going to whoa oh geez eric you're getting all kinds of excited here you're hitting the tripod and destroying the shot anyway <laughs> we're gonna give this four shuffles for you card number five and we will see what you are manifesting with this full moon in sagittarius yeah number one This is two. This is three. For card number five, what are you manifesting in the full moon in Sagittarius? And this is four. All right, guys. Let's see what we've got for you here. What messages do we have for card number five? Card. No, whoa, okay. You have a number of cards here. Overall energy, you do have the new moon in Aries. It's time to take action, okay? You have that with a number of cards. First one here that I want to talk about is nothing is yet set in stone. Um, there's this feeling that I'm getting for you, card number five, that... You may have been hesitating or procrastinating in um, taking a leap of faith or at least just moving forward. Uh, and that's because of apprehension. That's because, it, in fact, nothing is yet set in stone. So that I think I kind of feel like that type of energy or at least that feeling has what has been holding you back a lot in terms of taking forward or moving forward here. However, in the same way that you are perceiving that as uh, working against you, you could flip it and look at it from a point of view that in terms of it actually could work in your favor because nothing is yet set in stone. Like things are not clear, things are not solid, whatever. It hasn't fully manifested yet or it hasn't fully taken shape. So it's still malleable, all right? So move forward. But I mean, even with this, a new moon in Aries. Now this is the new moon, all right? And the new moon is definitely a time to start new beginnings. But even while I was channeling 
the energies of this full moon and just looking through the astrology before I even started recording anything, one of the big things that I was feeling for this new this full moon is that this is all about action. And sure, technically that makes sense because the full moon is a great time to is really the perfect time for you to start putting new things into place, for you to be manifesting, for you to do your new moon, your full moon rituals and all that stuff because working with the energies of the moon at this time is really um, uh, uh, lucrative or um, is a really great time to do it because the, the power and the energy of the moon is at its maximum during this phase. So okay, that makes perfect sense. But for you specifically, card number five, it's time for you to take action in terms of what it is that you want to do. Be, keep in mind that nothing is set in stone yet, so it still could work out in your favor. You don't really know, okay? Moving forward here, you do have full moon in Virgo. You are enough. So for some of you, I'm feeling like your inability to take action or your sense of procrastination or even let's just call it stalling. There's a feeling here that you're not enough, that you're not good enough, that you won't be good enough, that you won't be enough, that you don't know enough, you don't have enough knowledge. Oh, I got to study more. Oh, I got to practice more. Oh, I got to go do this course. I got to do this course. I got to get this certification, that certificate, this, that, blah, 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 blah. And that's nothing but a bunch of pile of sticks that are being thrown on you that you are actually allowing yourself to hold on to instead of taking the action that you know you are ready to take. You are enough. If you have a feeling, if you have an inspiration, if you are guided to move forward with something, you don't have to be an expert on it before you start taking action, okay? You can start, the, you can get the ball rolling in the beginning just to get some momentum going and continue to learn as you go. And especially the one thing that I want to say to you, card number five, is if you have some sort of feeling or inspiration or if there is some sort of inspiration that you're being guided towards or something's coming through your higher self and, and, and guiding you to do something saying, hey, let's take action here, then that is meant for you, that you have been chosen by God, source, creator or whatnot, whatever, whatever, however you want to say it, you have... There, this has meaning for you. You are meant to do this. So you don't need anybody else's approval. Okay. The fact that that spirit or your higher self or whatever came through and is saying to you, this is what we need you to do, then you are meant for it. You are right for it. You are ready for it. Okay. Next thing you do have is balance, spirituality, and practicality. And to be honest with you, card five, this is absolutely connected to this energy of needing to take action because nothing is yet set in stone and you are good enough. So what, what was I just saying in terms of you are good enough? If you have some sort of thought, feeling, inspiration, there's something, this strong desire within you that's needing to be expressed, that you're being pushed towards, then that's meant for you. It's right for you, okay? So... You have to balance the fact of the, 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 the practicality of it, okay, of like, okay, well, I need certain, certain, I need this specific certification, or I need to take this, this course, or I need to study this and then do this and do, okay, that's the practical aspect of it. But also take the spiritual aspect of it into play in terms of this is a calling to your soul. This is resonating with you on a spiritual level. You have to believe that if this is truly something you're feeling guided to move forward with, then and it's there for you for a reason. There is a spiritual reality for it, meaning that you are meant for this. So don't let any sort of physical circumstances bog you down or control you, ah, control you in terms of this. If you are feeling guided for it, if you are feeling inspired, then do it because it is meant for you. It resonates with you. It resonates with your soul. Okay. Last card that came out, it did come out falling. It did come out um, face down. So to me, this is an internal energy or maybe something that you're not aware of. It is the gibbous moon. You are very close to achieving your goal. But card number five, you're never going to achieve your goal if you don't take action. You got to take action, man. Let's do it, yo. Let's get up. Let's get this going. Let's get this bread. Let's get this paper. Let's get this show on the road, man. Ain't nothing going to happen if you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs, baby. <laughs> All right. Let's move forward. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> okay. We are going to move forward with the Sacred Destiny deck, and we're going to get you some information in terms of things that you can look out for, keywords, or just things to focus on or keep in the forefront of your mind. Yeah, I'm going to give this five shuffles. One. This is two. For card number five. If you chose card number five, yeah, this is three messages for you, card number five. 
This is four. And this is five. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Okay. And this is five. All right. So messages for you, keywords, things to look out for, things to keep in the forefront of your mind, card number five. What messages do we have for card number five in terms of what you are manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius? Okay, okay, okay. Mm. You have embracing and you also have purification. I want to get one more card for you. Ah, all right. At the bottom of the deck, you do have miracles. And here, this is supporting the energies that we were talking about in the beginning in terms of nothing is yet set in stone and then it's time to take action. The only way for you to receive a miracle is to take action towards it. Okay. So things really could work out in your favor in a way that you never expected, but then is, is like so great for you. You know what I mean? But you have to believe in it. You have to believe in miracles. And you, if you want, if you want something, you have to go for it. Card number five. All right. Stop holding yourself back like this. I want to get you one more card. One more card for card number five, please. One more card, please. Spirit. For card number five. Oh, well, they gave you three. No, only two. Okay, this is good, but this is really good. At the bottom of the deck, at right now, you do have truth. And it's funny, card number five, because when I started shuffling this deck, a few cards wanted to come out, and truth was one of them. But I didn't take it. I was like, well, no, I'm not going to take that right now. It didn't feel relevant. But then always, as always, if it wanted to come back out, if it was right for you, it would. And there it is. Okay, so also you have going forward and focus. Now, let's tie this all together. What is this talking about here? Uh, th this purification card is interesting because I feel like whatever it is you're needing to take action towards either is coming from a place of having purified a lot of your energy or is influencing you to purify things. So this could be a situation that we're talking about. It could be connected to what we talked about in card number four. So you might want to watch that one. Um, but you may be influenced to speak up about something or take action towards something that's going to help you purify the energies of that circumstance or that situation. Again, and it, ah, wait, that's interesting because card number four actually got nothing is yet set in stone. So you really might want to watch that one because this is feeling like a, a, a similar message. Okay. But, um, uh, there may be, there's an action that you're being guided to take. That's quite obvious. It's time to take action, but this is going to lead you towards purifying something. If that is the case for you, I understand the apprehension and the fear because you don't know how that's going to turn out. But ultimately this is leading to a greater sense of purification for others of you, whatever it is that you're being asked to move forward towards, it is coming from a sense of having purified your energies or your mind or your body in some way. And you're being asked regardless of whatever this is, you're being asked to embrace this opportunity for yourself so that you can move forward, going forward, okay? Keep your focus on the truth, yes? The truth will set you free. The truth is a main factor here for you. It's an overall energy. You have to focus on what the truth of the matter is. Very King of Swords energy. And, I, and it's interesting because as I've been talking through these, these five readings, there have been moments where I feel a certain card, a certain tarot card be relevant. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that's going to come out. And boop, there it is eventually. I'm feeling a King of Swords energy for you right now. Just the facts, ma'am, all right? I don't want to hear none of the bullshit. I don't want to hear none of the frills, none of the extra, none of the, the accoutrement or none of that shit, okay? I want the truth. I want the facts. I want it what it, I want it as it is, where it came from. I want the source. I want the all of the bullet points. I want all the information. Give me the facts. And it is within those facts, card five, that you are being asked to embrace the truth and focus on going forward, okay? Excellent. I wanna to move to the tarot here now. And for you, card five, we are going to be using the uh, Wild Unknown Tarot, yeah? I'm gonna give this five shuffles for you here. What are the tarot messages that we have for card number five for this full moon in Sagittarius, please? This is one. This is two.
This is three for card number five. Tarot messages for the full moon in Sagittarius. This is four. Card number five. And this is five. All right. So what tarot messages do we have for you? Card number five for this full moon in Sagittarius. Card number five. Stay right there. Do you have a card? Okay. 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 Overall energy. Well, okay. This is good. Overall energy. You do have the six of wands here. All right. This is Victor. Oh, wait. No. No. I'm sorry. Card five. This is the six of swords. Again, it's still a victory. That's what I was going to say when, it, when I thought it was the six of wands. It's still a victory. But when it comes to the six of swords, we're talking about a victory that requires a sacrifice. And um, hate that break it to you. Gonna be quite honest with you, card number five. This definitely has to do with some sort of love or interpersonal relationship. Again, you, gosh, which was it? Was it three or was it four? Shoot, I don't remember now. Uh, it, no, it wasn't three. It was four. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, guys. I don't remember. But there was another one of the readings that I did for this session that had to do with a relationship and had to do with um, speaking your truth and being honest and authentic. And if you're really going to have a loving and balanced and harmonious relationship, you need to be able to speak your truth without being gaslit or told that you're crazy or you're wrong. And that's a little bit of the energy that I'm picking up here for you. Let me show you what other tarot cards we do have. We did not get the King of Swords yet, but we did get the Knight of Swords, okay? You have the Knight of Swords here, the Two of Cups, you have the Empress, and you also have the Ace of Swords. So uh, card number five, there are some serious truths that, you're, that you are needing to speak. Um, and I actually didn't say this for any of the other ones until now, but I am going to say it now. And even, it, even then, it still applies to all the other ones. The roles could be reversed here, okay? So if you do not find yourself in a type of empress energy, if maybe you're the more on the masculine side, maybe the emperor energy, you could be potentially watching for someone and this is giving you perspective on the other side of the story, all right? The other person that is involved here. Um, but, sorry, mosquitoes. Um, yeah, I got the sucker too. Anyway, sorry guys. Uh, so... There's a feminine energy here that is needing to speak her truth because this relationship is not working, period. Two of cups in reverse. And quite frankly, it is feeling like you are much better off speaking your truth and if it comes down to it, completely moving away from the situation than you would be in staying. Now, I'm not going to tell you to just cut and run and not say anything about it. First and foremost here, what needs to happen, card number five, is you need to communicate. You need to step up. You need to speak your truth. From there, take it as it resonates, right? So if, the, if your partner is receptive to this, excellent. Let's work on it. If not, bye-bye, sucker. Right? Shit. Honestly, you guys, it, that and that's and see that's the energy of the six of swords. That is this victory, yes, that comes through, but that requires sacrifice. For some of you, that sacrifice is just putting your heart heart on the line there, sticking your neck out, and and and, and speaking up. And ultimately, things could work out in your favor. All uh, to be honest with you, I really feel like things can work out in your fav in your favor anyway. It just depends on which trajectory you are. Either you stay in the relationship or you guys split. And even if you guys split, man, that's most likely going to be the best thing for you because from that place you can move forward and get on with your life. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely an energy here for a romantic relationship that's coming through in which there is a process of purification that is underway. Whether that be in this relationship for you, the purification of the bond between the two of you, clearing out a lot of the toxicity, 
or just purifying your love vibration and your love uh, reality as a whole, okay? But you are going to have to embrace some sort of truth. You have the truth here on, at, with the Sacred Destiny deck, and then you also have the Ace of Swords here, which is, rep which is again, representing the truth. You are going to need to embrace the truth and embrace it from the focus of moving forward. Regardless as to whether or not that person that you're in this relationship comes with you. Understood? And if, they, and if they don't come with you, you are better off without them. I will tell you that right now. No if ands, or buts about it. You are better off. Okay? Let's get some clarity here. And I feel like I'm going to be clarifying, clarifying damn near all of these. <laughs> Five shuffles for you. One. This is two. This is three. Oh, try that again. This is three. Okay, well, the Queen of Swords just flashed me. Mm-hmm. She ain't fucking around, y'all. Let me tell you something. Let me, uh, yo, let me tell you something. Queen of Swords ain't playing, all right? She is the truth, all about the truth. All the, she wants the whole truth, all about the truth, and nothing but the, the whole, the, the whole, you know what I'm trying to say. All right, she's not fucking around. Okay. Message. This is three. This is four. Try that again. This is four. And this is five. <laughs> One more time. This is five. Okay. The first thing that I want to clarify here for you, card number five, is this two of cups in reverse. Yeah? What is the two of cups in reverse for card? Damn. Homegirl's still there. Okay. What's this two of cups in reverse for card number five, please, Spirit? Well, shit. First card out. Ooh, honey. Well, let's start here, actually. Overall energy is the emperor. You have the empress and the emperor coming through for you here. And in this situation, card five, I really, this could be speaking to your counterpart. You could be dealing with a twin flame situation within the divine masculine represented by the emperor and the divine feminine represented by the empress. Okay. Um, but also I feel like this is the divine masculine within you. If you resonate with the twin flame journey, or you're just inner sense of masculine energy coming through saying, setting up some boundaries here. Okay. And, uh, uh, other than that, with that, you first uh, one of the first cards here you have is the King of Cups. Now, the King of Cups could represent your partner, could represent your counterpart. This could represent a water type, potentially a Scorpio, um, but it could be another water sign. It doesn't have to be any of those, okay? But what I'm getting for you, card number five, is that there is something that you need to do that is not easy to do, but you know you need to do it. And it's most likely on an emotional basis. Okay. Oh, damn. She came out, didn't she? She sure as shit did. Look what else came out, you guys. You do have the Five of Wands. I did see that before in conjunction with the King of Cups. And that's really quite perfect. Because first thing about the King of Cups is that he represents emotional maturity. Excuse me. Emotional boundaries. Uh, emotional stability. Um, he is the type of energy that no matter what is going on around him, no matter how rocky or choppy the water, waters are around him, no matter what storm is raging, he will be able to consistently and effectively stand his ground. Ain't shit gonna affect him. Ain't nothing throwing him off that throne. He's solid. He's good when it comes to his emotions. And that's a really perfect energy to combat the fiery, chaotic, and opinion-based energy of the Five of Wands. Some of you, I feel like, are in fact being gaslit, okay? You need to cut that shit out of your life right now. I don't care who it's coming from. Anybody that devalues your emotions or your reality or your thoughts and feelings is not worth your time and energy, baby. I will tell you that right now. You are better off without somebody like that, okay? Um, 
But the King of Cups is representing the stable and emotionally balanced energy that is necessary to weather this chaotic or opinion-based energy of the Five of Wands. Now, let's look at what the other two cards are that came out. And now, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Remember, this is clarifying the Two of Cups here. So let me, let me not do that. Okay, look at what we got here. First of all, we do have the Seven of Pentacles. Okay, so the Seven of Pentacles is representing an energy of slightly Einstein's uh, definition of insanity, doing something the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. At this point, card number five, I feel like you're getting ready to just nip that shit, cut it all down, rip that plant up and start a new one. Whether this is a new relationship altogether, or this is a new phase in your relationship, it doesn't matter. Whatever resonates for you, whatever works for you, what end up, whatever end up, ends up happening for you, then that's what's right for you. But look at what that came with. Your good old best friend, that queen of swords. Huh. Fancy that. So with this energy of the Queen of Swords, coupled with the Seven of Pentacles, what I feel like is happening for you here right now is you are getting to a point where you can't deny, you cannot ignore what is happening in this relationship or in this circumstance for you if it's not a romantic relationship. And that's why we have also the Emperor here at the bottom of the deck. There are, there's a sense of protection Okay, and boundaries that is coming into play for you here. And for some of you, I am feeling like this is like one of the very first times that you've even had the wherewithal. Well, you've even had the, the clarity of mind and clarity of emotions, let alone the wherewithal to put these boundaries into place for yourself here. Okay, but this is the truth that you need to face. Somebody is ready to is, is about ready to just cut this, mow this whole thing down and start all over. And if that means starting over without you or without the other person, then they're about ready to do it. Because what I'm getting, there's a sense of frustration that's coming through with the Seven of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords. It's like, in some cases, it feels like we, what I'm hearing is we keep trying and trying and trying and nothing ever changes. Why doesn't anything have to change? Or why doesn't anything change? Maybe the other person is asking, why does anything have to change? And you know what? No shade like to whomever is like, why does anything ever have to change? That's cool, man. Do your thing, sis, bro. Like that's all you. But you cannot expect somebody else to sit there with you in that same energy or whatever it is you're trying not to change and expect them to be okay with it. If you find someone that aligns with you, that works with you in that sense, more power to you. I wish you all the best. But if you are aligned with someone right now that's actively trying to make creative and beneficial and self-sustaining change in their life and you're just sitting there like I ain't trying to have it, then you got to go. It's not any fault of yours and it's not any fault of theirs. It's literally a differing of opinion. Five, five, five on the counter. You cannot expect someone to sit there with you and do the same things over and over again when they've been constantly expressing to you that this doesn't work for them at least. And quite frankly, it may not even work for you, but we ain't going to get into that here. That's a whole other topic of conversation. Somebody is about ready to cut this cord, okay? With that said, then, what I want to clarify next is the Ace of Swords, what is this Ace of Swords for card number five, please, Spirit? Mm-hmm. Well, shit, I saw that coming. <laughs> and, then, and then my higher self says, Eric, did you really, though? Shut up. <laughs> okay. We have what we need here. Oh, there's the Knight of Swords again. Look. Oh, Jesus, I'm destroying my whole set in my setup here. Look, you guys, there's about, there's about to be a knockdown, drag-out battle. I'm not, I'm not even trying to, I'm not trying to be extra. I'm not trying to, you know, stir the pot. I'm being real. We have the Knight of Swords twice. And the Knight of Swords is a very volatile energy. He's very shoot first, ask questions later. And as I'm rolling with this energy and reading through it for you guys, it really just feels like somebody's about to, somebody's getting to their wits end about this. Like it, it, it even to the point where I feel like they're, if you get, if you push them far enough, or if you push this away, if you hold off on this long enough, man, somebody is going to let you have it. Someone is just going to just come at you swinging, man. Like, I'm, yo, yo, you need to handle this. You need to handle this. Now, Ace of Swords is here. It's coupled, uh, I'm sorry, it's clarified by the higher, I'm sorry, the Hermit, 
and the Hierophant, but the Hierophant is in reverse. So there is a state of self-awareness here that someone has come to or is coming to. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is reminding me of when I was in a relationship, a, a sig very significant relationship in the past. If you've been following me long enough, then you know what I'm talking about. But I had to leave that relationship because it was exactly for this one of the very same reasons that I'm describing here. The partner that I was with was very comfortable in his life and he didn't want anything to change and that's great but at the same time i was changing and i couldn't stay any longer because it was i i had been learning about myself i was growing i was getting down to the truth to more of the truth of who i am and at that point i could not just stay with the status quo any longer that's what the hierophant is representing in this situation the hierophant is in reverse okay you have two more cards that have come out face down interesting i feel like i'm gonna need more clarity with this but we have the eight of swords here with the two of pentacles uh oh okay well shit what i'm hearing in terms of this what is the truth of this matter <laughs> message what is the deeper truth of this matter is that somebody is looking to cut themselves free knight of swords of the monotony eight of swords and the two of and the two of pentacles in reverse okay and not no 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 i'm sorry that's not in reverse the eight of swords and the two of pentacles is representing some sense of monotony some sense of the same shit over and over again that seems to be trapping someone i want to get a little more clarity on that can you clarify the eight of swords and the two of pentacles a little more please for card number five. Oh, yep well shit i said what i said said the universe the world the world honey the world somebody really wants to end this monotonous cycle as somebody wants to end this status quo this same shit different toilet <laughs> you know what i mean same thing day after day but it's just a different day right and then at the bottom of the deck you do have the counterpart to the hierophant it's the high priestess but in this situation the hierophant is in reverse the hierophant is representing the monotony the same shit over and over and over again not getting anywhere not doing anything new releasing that releasing also the comfort zone and the perceived security that comes with that hierophant same like 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 status quo monotonous uh, type of energy someone is letting go of that for a higher awareness for something better something greater something unknown sure but something potentially really really beautiful okay someone is really trusting their intuition and trusting the universe here when it comes to this form of truth, when it comes to cutting themselves free from the monotony, okay? Bringing this cycle to an end. Excellent, card five. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna close out this reading for you. I'm gonna get you some Oracle guidance from the Everyday Witch Oracle, yeah? All right, five shuffles here for you, card number five. What is your closing message in terms of what you are manifesting in this full moon in Sagittarius? This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. And this is five. Woo, 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 woo. Come on, get it together, five. Okay. All right, closing guidance for card number five, please, Spirit. All right, there we go. Oh, beautiful. You have healing waters. Let's read. Bear with me here. I just have to find it. This would be water, healing waters. There we go, 76. All right, the action with this card says, take a healing bath or a shower if you don't have a tub. Put on some quiet music if you like and add sea salt to the water of the tub or use a salt scrub if you are in the shower. Be mindful of the element of water as you bathe and visualize illness, pain, and sadness going down the drain. Let the water wash away your troubles like the rain washes dust off a car. Come out of your bath or shower feeling healed and renewed and re reconnected with the power of water. Your divination in this card says, 
the, this card is a reminder to connect with water in its most powerful ways. If you can go to a body of water, the ocean, a lake, or even a stream, now is a good time to do so. If you don't have one nearby, maybe buy a small tabletop fountain and spend time listening to it. The sound of moving water is almost as healing as the waters themselves. Or the water themselves. It's up, but you know what I meant. <laughs> Okay, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I I definitely encourage you guys to share your experience if you feel so inclined. Let me know in the in the comments section which card you picked if you if you chose this one and let me know how it resonated with you. If you feel inclined to share your story, please don't hesitate. We are an open and inclusive and loving community here in Divine Conversations and I'm sure many, many others. You are safe here. This is a safe space. You are encouraged to share your story, not only because there are plenty of people, including myself, that would be willing to send you some loving words of encouragement and some loving energy and prayers and guidance, but also you sharing your story could absolutely help someone else as well, okay? So there's encouragement there. Also, if you would like to come back to this later on and share how this ended up playing out for you, how this resonated for you later on after things, after the energies have moved through a little bit, I definitely recommend that you do that. But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic moon cycle. I love you all so much and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah, take care. Bye. <laughs>